everyone. How's everyone doing today? Good. Good. Okay, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. So, um, I'm Elizabeth Hewlett, Chair of the Prince George's County Planning Board, and I'm going to do a, a, roll, um, a check to make sure that we have our planning board members with us today. Okay. Okay, so there we have. So, I see um, Vice Chair Bailey, Dorothy Bailey. I see Commissioner... Right. Commissioner Shanice Washington, Commissioner, Commissioner Will Dorner, he's present, and I see Com Commissioner Manny Giraldo. Ah, present. Yes, indeed he is. Um, so we are, we are also joined by our principal uh, legal counsel, David Warner, I see. Um, and in the hearing room, we have our technical hearing writer, Lee Kratka, safely distanced away. And um, we have our planning director, um, Andre uh, Green Sheckley, and we have um, Kenny Flanagan, who's doing our, all of our PowerPoints and whatnot and keeping us focused. So we have our good team. I know James Hunt, the chief of development review, is in the vicinity, so uh, guiding us through everything as well. Um, so, and then we have Langley, who is on loan to us, who's helping us out with technology as well. So the planning board is now in session for our July 9th, 2020 hearing. And due to the COVID-19 um, pandemic, this is the 15th virtual meeting utilizing online, phone, and video capabilities. So we've been having these hearings since uh, mid-March. Um, and during these challenging and unprecedented times, the Commission remains steadfastly committed to promoting a safe and healthy environment for our public, for our applicants, for our stakeholders, and for our staff, and of course for the boards. Um, while we all continue business operations to propel Prince George's County forward. I'd like to take a moment to reiterate our guidelines for these virtual hearings. For, um, it's coming up on the screen. Um, there, speaker pre-registration and pre-submission of comments and exhibits is required. All participants must pre-register and all materials must be submitted by 10 a.m. on the Wednesday before the planning board meeting as shown on the screen. Regi the registered speakers and presenters connecting through a computer, tablet, or smartphone can join the meeting with the link provided via the email from the planning board office. Online participants may be prompted to install GoToMeeting software in order to participate in the process. To listen or participate in the meeting using a phone line, the registered participants may dial the call-in number provided via the email. All participants must mute their phones when not speaking, so please do not put your phone on hold. To eliminate audio feedback, only one connected device with sound should be in the room at the same time. Meanwhile, the public may continue to watch planning board meetings streamed live, or if you wish to become a person of record, you may sign up on our online web form and please note the screen right there um, for instructions. We thank each and every one of you for and, um, and appreciate your flexibility, cooperation, and support as we continue to keep our planning functions moving forward in a safe fashion during our new normal. As always, we commence our planning board hearings with a mo okay. Somebody, everybody needs to be. Everybody else needs to be muted, if possible. Okay, so um, as always, we commence our meetings, our planning board meetings, with a moment of silence in honor of the individuals and loved ones that we've lost throughout our community and nation um, who passed away recently. I'm going to start out in, in Prince George's County. We lost an icon in the legal community. Um, most of our attorneys knew him well. Um, the public has ex experienced um, this uh, retired judge. But anyway, it was Judge Vincent Famia. Um, who is an associate judge of the Circuit Court for Prince George's County and also an associate judge before that uh, of the District Court of Maryland. He was a former deputy and assistant state's attorney for Prince George's County. He was a very intelligent, engaging man with a sense of humor pretty much unparalleled by most people. So it is a huge loss for the, um, for the community. Uh, we want to remember Judge Vince Famia. Wanda Leonard who was a commissioner and the former mayor of the town of Upper Marlboro. She was only the second African-American mayor in the town's 313-year history. We want to remember 
the people who passed due to the COVID-19 um, virus. Over 3 million in the United States, closing in on 71,000 in Maryland, and 300, uh, those are the confirmed cases, and over 3,725 deaths in the state of Maryland. In Prince George's County, we have 19,776 confirmed cases since the onset and 692 deaths. Again, these are, to not, I give them as statistics, but remember, these are loved ones. These are people who are in our community. These are people who are loved by their families. We want to remember them. We also want to remember Herbert Wolf Melger, the broadcaster who was a native of El Salvador and a resident of Prince George's County who organized major Hispanic festivals in our areas year in and year out. Nick Cordero, age 41, the Tony Award nominated Broadway actor for his roles in Bullets Over Broadway and A Bronx Tale. Vanessa Guillen, um, who was the missing Army specialist last seen on April 22nd at Fort Hood Military Base. Her remains were ultimately discovered on June 30th. Hugh Downs, age 99, the Emmy-winning broadcaster who hosted ABC's 2020, NBC's Today, CBS's 60 Minutes, and the game show Concentration, who was also an announcer and substitute host on The Tonight Show. Um, speaking of comedy, Carl Reiner, age 98, TV comedy pioneer, who was the writer, director, and producer um, who sometimes appeared on the Dick Van Dyke show. He was the father of actor Rob Reiner, s sometimes known as Meathead, um, and he was Saul in Oceans 11, 12, and 13. Just an amazing um, comedic force, and he was recently depicted uh, with celebrating Mel Brooks' birthday. Both of them um, were 98. And it was interesting, both of them were donning their Black Lives Matter shirts um, just, just a couple of weeks ago. Um, Joe Bugle, age 80, the former NFL coach known as the architect of the Hogs. He was the Washington football team's legendary offensive line during the 80s and led the Washington football team to three Super Bowls and two championships. Ola Mae Spinks, Ola Mae Spinks, age 106, retired librarian who played a critical, pivotal role in organizing the slave narratives in the United States Library of Congress. They were the recollections of over 2,000 former enslaved people, and they were gathered in the 1936 through 1938 during the Great Depression. So um, I know um, our own vice chair knows a lot about that, and she was, um, she actually played a part in a, um, performing in a, in a real live performance depicting one of these um, persons who was telling her story about being enslaved, and she may want to comment on that later. Um, Johnny Mandel, age 94, Oscar and Grammy winning um, songwriter who composed the MASH theme song. Freddie Cole, age 88, jazz singer and pianist who was Grammy nominated in 2019 for the best jazz vocal album. He happened to be the younger brother of the inimitable Nat King Cole. Kelly Asbury, um, director of the animated film Shrek 2. And um, he's also the story artist for Frozen and Toy Story. Danny Hicks, um, the actor who played in Evil Dead, Dark Man, and Spider-Man 2. Near and dear to my heart, Milton Glaser, age 91, the graphic designer known for the iconic I Love New York logo and to promote tourism in the state of New York since 1977. He was also the co-founder of New York Magazine in 1968. He died on his birthday on June 26. Joe Sinnott, comic artist, age 93. There's a theme here. Those comedians tend to live long lives, so keep a sense of humor. Um, age 93, helped define the look of Marvel Comics, worked on the Fantastic Four, Captain America novel, and the Amazing Spider-Man newspaper strip. Uh, Linda Cristal, um, age 89, the Golden Globe winning actress of The High Chaparral and The Perfect Furlough. Charlie Daniels, the Country Music Hall of Fame fiddler. Marvin Brown, the singer of the soul in the soul group, The Soft Tones. Um, Ennio Morricone, Morricone, age 91, the Oscar winning uh, composer for films The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, The Mission, and The Hateful Eight. Charlie Webb, the novelist who wrote The Graduate in Homeschool. Madeline Winnie Dale, age 98, the first female officer of the Federal Reserve Bank. 
William Demet, age 91, scientist who coined REM, which is rapid eye movement, and developed a field of sleep research. Um, Manuel Cal Cowboy Donnelly, age 92, um, Teano music pioneer, who was a singer, instrumentalist, arranger, and composer. I know that there are many more people who have passed. Um, also, we have John Mooney, the, who was the father of the catalytic converter, who also died at age 90, and Alex Pullen, who was the former uh, world snowboard champion, who died in a drowning accident at the tender age of 32. There are many more for any of you in our listening or viewing audience who suffered a loss. Um, our hearts, uh, we extend our hearts to you and we hold you in our thoughts and prayers. If we may have a moment of silence, please. Thank you. So, our last meeting was in June. It is now the month of July, which is National Parks and Recreation Month. It is National Sandwich Generation Month for those of us who have um, parents and those of us who have kids. You know, you are right smack in the middle in that sandwich generation and very often don't take care of yourself. So it's important that you take care of yourselves too. It is National HIV Awareness Month, National Roadside Traffic uh, Safety Awareness Month, and Bereaved Parents Awareness Month. So many parents have lost their own children and there's nothing more egregious uh, um, and there is no more profound loss than losing your child. So we want to remember all bereaved parents during this month. The week of, of July 5th through the 11th is National Therapeutic Recreation Week, which is something that we, um, that we at the Park and Planning Commission, and particularly our Department of Parks and Recreation, has been a pioneer in this area. And we have received national awards in the area of National Therapeutic Recreation. It is also Be Nice to New Jersey Week. Now, Commissioner Geraldo, do you hear that? Okay, so this, I guess that means we all have to be extra nice to Commissioner Geraldo. Now, apparently July is a big foodie month because it is National Baked Beans Month, National Grilling Month, National Blueberry Month, National Hot Dog Month, National Deli Sandwich Month, National Watermelon Month, and National Ice Cream Month. Um, we have a couple more announcements that I'd like to make. Uh, first of all, we have the census sign up there. Come, we had, today is July 9th. Come August 11th. Um, we, we have until August 11th to really start getting people to fill out their census forms. It is so, uh, so important um, because we lost $363 million in Prince George's County simply by people not completing their census. We know that people are afraid. Those of us who are gung-ho have already done so, so we really need to serve as ambassadors to get people to complete their census forms. In Prince George's County, our self-response rate as of now is 63.6%. In Maryland, it's 65.9%. Uh, so we really need to work hard to get this done. The goal of the county executive also, Brooks, is to get to at least 85%. We don't want to leave money on the table. I know the people who are watching us have, have completed the census forms, but it's imperative that we ask our neighbors, our families, we make sure that the other people that we know complete their census forms. So I'm going to go back to our, um, and you, you can do this virtually, and you can do this by phone, you can do this online. Um, and so the, the, the phone number and the site is depicted on the screen, my2020census.gov or 844-330-2020. Um, so I'd like to go back to our planning board for a second, if I can have a visual. Of us. Now, I, that is why each one of us is wearing our proud to be counted census caps today. We are all all in in ensuring that Prince George's County residents are counted. Please help us do the right thing. Please help us get everyone counted. Please help us tell the story of why this is so important to Prince George's County, how it helps with programs like SNAP and WIC and hospitals, hospitalizations, and having enough vaccines for, th for any kind of cri unexpected crisis that could occur. <clears throat> and it's so very, very important. We do not want to leave this money on the table. It helps with transportation and so many other things. So are we all in? Are we all in for census? Okay, there we go. Um, and I will cons say that the Department of Parks and Recreation is continuing their grab-and-go programs. It went from three locations to five locations, now to nine locations, um, five days a week distributing food to persons in need. Um, and then we have um, uh, 
extreme teens and uh, partnering with county agencies to present safe dates and how healthy is your relationship. I will also tell you that we have kicked off a program with the um, state's attorney's office for Prince George's County. It's a joint program with the state's attorney's office, the brainchild of um, state's attorney Aisha Brave Boy, in partnership with our uh, Department of Parks and Recreation. It's going to teach teens about the justice system, the law enforcement, the role of the judge, the role of the jury. And it's just so, it's so impressive. So I had the opportunity to, to participate in the kickoff. But even if no one chooses um, a direction uh, to go in a field of, of a law enforcement or legal field, it educates youth about their rights, which is so very important as well. So um, with that, I think that may be it for the announcements. Again, we thank you for your um, flexibility, cooperation, and support, and we ask that you make every effort to stay safe, look out for one another, stay strong, stay resilient, and remain ever hopeful and woke as we strive to get through all of these challenges together. Thank you. Um, I am going to commence with our agenda. The first order of business is item one, the resolution of appreciation for Judy D'Ambrosi, whose, re whose virtual retirement is today. Um, so we all have that before us. But Judy um, has ably and conscientiously served the residents of Prince George's County for 31 years as a dedicated team member of the planning department um, of the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission. Um, she's worked on so many plans. She came in working on the Bowie Master Plan and is departing just as we're kicking off the Bowie area and uh, Bowie, Mitchellville and vicinity Master Plan and so many others in between. So we want to give Judy a round of applause and, and then if I could have a motion to approve the resolution, that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Second. We have a motion by um, we have a motion by Vice Chair Bailey and seconded by Commissioner Washington. Uh, Vice Chair Bailey. Put on. Um, Commissioner Washington. Aye. Um, Commissioner Geraldo. Aye. Okay. Commissioner Dorner. Good eye. Okay. Um, the ayes have it. Five zero. Thank you. And the next is we have the draft minutes of the meeting of June 25th, 2020. Move approval, Madam Chair. Commissioner second. Washington. Okay. We have a motion is there, and a second by um, Madam Vice Chair. Um, Madam Vice Chair? Aye. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Um, Commissioner Ger Geraldo? Aye. Commissioner Dwarner? Good on. Okay, the motion carries 5 0. Okay, so next we have um, the consent agenda. However, before we um, get too far down the consent agenda, I need a motion to remove item 4D, which is um, the final plat 5 19004, grayling, parcel A, um, with variation. And we will, uh, I need a motion to remove that from the consent agenda and set it in as item 12. So moved, Madam Chair. Second. So a motion by Commissioner Washington, seconded by um, Vice Chair Bailey. Uh, Commissioner Washington? Aye. Vice Chair Bailey? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Aye. Commissioner Dorner? Good eye. Okay. Um, so now we can go through the remainder of the consent agenda. Is there anyone here to oppose the staff's recommendations on item 4A, B, E, F, G, and H, and except for, let me, let me just do this for G. Mr. Rivera, you're signed up for item G. Is that just for questions? Yes, that was just to okay. watch the Okay. Okay, so, so we need a motion for items 4A, B, E, F, G, and H. Okay. Okay, I'm real confused here. I voted before the motion. Okay, so who made the motion? Commissioner Washington? Or did you make the motion? I, it doesn't matter. I'll second whatever. Okay, so th was, okay, Vice Chair Bailey made the motion and voted at the same time. Okay, and Commissioner Washington <laughs> seconded. Um, Vice Chair Bailey, we're counting your vote. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Dorner? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Aye. The ayes have it. Passed 5-0. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
Next, we have item 11, which is the 2018 Water and Sewer Service Area Changes. It's the March 2020 cycle of amendments, CR 45-2020. Good morning, Madam Chair. This is Ivy Thompson. I'm here. Okay, thank you. Ivy Thompson and Bobby Ray, are you here too? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Good morning. Thank you. And, uh, and Katina Schollers, are you here too? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, I am here. Okay, so I understand. Um, okay, so let me uh, let you you all kick it off, Ms. Thompson or Ms. Shoulders. I understand there are a couple of, uh, of changes you need to make. Ms. Thompson, you want to get us started? Um, oh, good, morning. good morning, Madam Chair. This is Katina. I do. I just um, I do apologize for a last minute change. No worries. Uh, we did um, one of the cases we did confirm that um, the recommended land use is mixed use it and we, we just want permission to make that change and forward that to um, DPI and to the Department of Inspections Permit and Enforcement and let them know to make that change in their tech in their staff report and this is for the first case which is the, the Livings Livingston, Livingston Warehouse okay got it okay so with that um, and then um, Ms. Thompson, you will incorporate that as in your presentation then? The rest of Yes, I will. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Thompson then? Okay. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the Planning Board. Good morning. And for the record, my name is Ivy Thompson with the Countywide Planning Division, and this is a review of the requested amendments to the 2018 Water and Sewer Plan for March 2020. The 2018 Water and Sewer Plan was adopted by Council Resolution CR 64 2019 and amended by Council Resolutions CR 75 2019 and CR 11 2020, which provides four annual cycles of category change amendments to the plan. The March cycle is the first of the four cycles. Staff is seeking permission to transmit comments to the Prince George's County Council. Next slide, please. Council Resolution CR 45-2020 introducing the March 2020 cycle amendments was presented to the Prince George's County Council at their June 2nd meeting. The Planning Board is required to provide comments to the County Council on CR 45-2020 per the Environment Code article of the Annotated Code of Maryland and the adopted 2018 Water and Sewer Plan. The public hearing for the March 2020 cycle amendments was held on July 7th. The County Council Committee of the Whole will discuss the County Executive recommendations during their July 14th meeting. Next slide, please. Planning Department staff reviewed five category change requests, all are in the Piscataway Sewer Basin. The County Executive recommends advancing all five. Additionally, the Department of Planning, I mean, Department of Permitting, Inspections and Enforcement has amended the sewer category map to include four residential lots confirmed to be on public sewer, which were not reviewed by the planning department staff. Next slide, please. The first case is Livingston Road Warehouse. It's addressed as 11020 Livingston Road in Fort Washington. And this application is for the development of 130,000 square foot warehouse in the I-3 zone. The planning department, as Ms. Schollers mentioned, has recommended mixed use for this property and the request is to advance to water and sewer category four. Next slide, please. The next project is the Cheltenham Veterans Cemetery, addressed as one 1501 Southwest Robert Crane Highway in Sheldonham. It's a public agency project for the future expansion of administrative and maintenance buildings in connection to the public water and sewer system. This project is being reviewed as an administrative mandatory referral. And the request for this project is to advance to water and sewer category three. Next slide, please. Pier House at Swan Creek is addressed as 12311 Haddon Point Road in Fort Washington. It's for the development of a 4,769 square foot custom home, custom designed single family resort home. The property is in the Chesapeake Bay critical area and the planning board reviewed and approved this project as CP-06001-01 
and DSP-18052 Swan Creek Club Development Lot 9C. The DSP was reviewed and approved by the District Council and the request is to advance to Water and Sewer Category 3. Next slide, please. Saddle Creek Parcel 236 is located on South Hill Road in Brandywine. And it, this is for the development of two single family dwelling units with a minimum of 1,384 square feet of livable space and a minimum sale price of $350,990. And the request is to advance to water and sewer category three. Next slide, please. Battle Creek Parts 37 and 143 are addressed at 6405 and 6315 Floral Park Road in Brandywine. And they are for the development of six single family dwelling units with a minimum of 1,384 square feet of livable space with a minimum sale price of $350,990. And the request again is to advance to sewer category three. Next slide, please. Wait a minute. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So please note that the countywide redesignations along Akakeek Road, Holly Hill Drive are included in the March 2020 cycle of amendments, and they were included for administrative purposes to adjust the county's mapping. DPI included them for, initial, for, for informational purposes only, and no action by the planning board is required on this item. Next slide, please. And staff is requesting planning board approval to transmit the March 2020 cycle amendment comments to the Prince George's County Council, and that concludes staff presentation. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. I'm going to see if the um, board has any questions for you at this time. Uh, Madam Vice Chair, any questions? No questions, thank you. Um, Commissioner Washington? No questions. Um, Commissioner Dorner? No questions, thanks. Commissioner Geraldo? Yeah, yeah, the only question I have is for clarification. I saw that the county executive, on some of the, the changes, the county executive had recommended sewer level four, water and sewer four, but we were going to three. Sometime. If you go back to, yeah. uh, I think number seven, slide seven. And I, and I think I think we the county rec executive recommendation was to go to category four, but I think in the presentation you said three, so I'm a little confused. That 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 would be my error. That would that would be my error. I apologize. <laughs> That's okay. There's another one that you did that as well. I think the subsequent one, either the one previous or the one subsequent. Look, can we look at slide eight? Uh, so. No, slide eight with the county executive slide eight. Re recommended three. Slide eight. Let's go to eight. The county executive recommended, okay. Four. So you said four, and, and I think Ms. Thompson said three. So I just want I, the record to be clear. That, that's my fault. I did. Okay. My, my okay. slides are different. So just so, I'm, just so the record is clear, we went whatever was recommended by the county executive we went that way is that right yes okay thank you okay um thank you for your questions um um so miss thompson is there anything else to add or miss shoulders no okay um there's no yeah. one excuse me there's no one signed up on this is there a motion Madam Chair, I move that we um, approve the uh, transmittal of the uh, County Executive and Planning Department's recommendation to the County Council. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Washington, seconded by uh, Vice Chair Bailey. Um, uh, Vice Chair Bailey? But aye. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Dorner? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Aye. Thank you. The ayes have it. Okay. Um, next, we have item, and we're going to proceed in this order, so let's give everyone a heads up. After this one, um, we're, we're going with item 5, 6, 7, 12, 8, 9, 10, 3A. 
Okay. So I, I, you need me to repeat that? Five, six, seven, twelve, eight, nine, ten, three A. So right now we're on um, item five, um, which is CP nine three zero zero nine dash O one Cottrell Property Swan Creek Club. I'm going to do a check to make sure we have everyone we need. Um, Anton Heath. Present. Sherry Connor. Okay. Present. Thank you. Mr. Masog? Present. Okay, and that's it for this particular matter. So, Mr. Heath, you're on. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Uh, the, rep the representative for this case is the engineer, Diet Shalabi, but he yeah. was unable to sign up before the Wednesday 10 a.m. deadline. Yeah. However, he, he did provide earlier correspondence with staff indicating he was in agreement with the okay. finding that he did with the staff report. Thank you. Oh, good morning, Madam Chair and members mm -hmm. of the board. For the record, I'm Antoine Heath with the Subdivision Zoning Section. Item 5 before you is Conservation Plan for Patrol Property, CP-93009-01. The subject property is the site of an existing single-family dwelling, which is to be raised and replaced with a new single-family dwelling on a 1.5-acre on parcel overlooking the Potomac River in the Chesapeake Bay critical area. Slide two, please. The site is located in southern Prince George's County within planning area eight in Council District eight. Slide three, please. More specifically, the site is located on the west side of the intersection of Hatton Point Road and Swan Creek Road. Slide four, please. Subject height is located in the RE, Residential Estate Zone, it's bounded to the north and south with properties who share the same zone and the rural residential zone properties to the east, uh, developed with single-family detached dwellings. Next slide, please. The subject site is also located within the limited development overlay zone. Next slide, please. This aerial photograph shows the site in its current condition and the adjacent residential develop properties. Next slide, please. The site map shows topography gradually sloping downhill from east to west towards the Potomac River. Next slide, please. The master plan right-of-way map shows that there are no master plan right-of-ways abutting the property. Next slide, please. This is a bird's eye view of the site from the west showing the existing dwelling. Next slide, please. This conservation plan shows the proposed single-family dwelling to be built in largely the same footprint as the existing dwelling. The property is accessed from the east. No trees will be removed on the site during the construction, and an A4 station area is being proposed between the dwelling and a portion of the existing asphalt driveway will be removed and partially replaced with a pervious with pervious pavers. The plan also shows stabilization upgrades to the existing riverbank, and a mulch path will be laid from the front of the dwelling to the riverbank, which is shown in a bold black line. In conjunction with this conservation plan, the applicant has requested a variance from Section 5B-114 E8 to exceed the 15% lot coverage allowed in the Chesapeake Bay critical area limited development overlay zone. The existing site was developed prior to the CBCA regulations and has a lot coverage of 16.8%. The applicant's plan proposes to reduce the lot coverage to 15.3%, exceeding the allowable limit by 0.3%. Staff recommends approval of this variance in accordance with the required findings outlined on page pages 7 through 10 of the technical staff report. Next slide, please. Although not required for the conservation plan, the applicant has provided elevations of the proposed level. Next slide, please. The end. Staff okay. recommends that the planning board adopt the findings and approve conservation plan CP-93009-01 and variance to section 5D-114 E8 subject to the four conditions contained in the staff report. This concludes staff's presentation. 
Okay. Thank you, Mr. Heath. Um, so, in, in other words, with, um, with this variation, which would take it from um, the, the, the limit of the cap of 15% to 15.3%, um, with the variation, it would be an improvement of the current 16.8% impervious surface. Is, that's what yes, I understood? That's correct. Okay, so it works out better. Okay, let's see if there's any questions for you. Um, Madam Vice Chair? No questions, thank you. Okay, uh, Commissioner Washington? No questions, thank you. Commissioner Dorner? No questions. Commissioner Geraldo? Yes, I have a question. Okay. I was looking at the, uh, the findings, and I'm a little, if you could better explain how this specific parcel of land has exceptional narrowness, shallowness, or shape, exceptional type topographic conditions, or other extraordinary situations or conditions. So I've read your, the justification, but I don't see anything exceptional, narrow, shallow, or other extraordinary situation. So if you could help me understand how you came to that conclusion. Yes, the, the issue with this particular site is that the existing dwelling is, is pretty close to the waterfront in comparison to the street. So they had to have a, a pretty long driveway in order to get to the existing dwelling. That's what's contributing to the, the large lot coverage area. And in the, the CBC area, CB, uh, the Chesapeake Bay Critical Overlay area, all of those lot coverages apply to the, uh, they all count in this situation. So uh, even if, so essentially the majority of the, the lot coverage is, is coming from that long driveway. So in this particular situation, to, to move the house to a different location or to- Let me sign it. It, it would actually end up increasing the, the amount of uh, lot disturbance. Usually I see so that right here. That particular situation is, is why it was difficult to, that's why I felt it was difficult to, uh, that was a uh, challenge. Okay. I, 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 don't, I don't understand how it's exceptional. You know, and I, I under, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, man. Sure. No, no, I no, didn't mean I to interrupt you, so go ahead. Just, I think those the regular the Chesapeake res, uh, regulations were put in for a reason, and I understand the theory that since it's now 16.8 and it's being reduced to 15.3, that's great. But that's still why doesn't it go to 15? Or 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 stay I, as it is at 16.8? We could do that. 16.8 now as existing, but that was built before the regulations so, or they, any regulation. So they have the option. They have the option now of keeping it at sixteen point eight too. They, they do. They do. So, but, but it's a tear down. So that's why they don't have the option. That's true. Because basically they're going to rebuild the entire thing. But they don't have to. That's true. They don't have to. But if they didn't have to, they wouldn't be before us right now. No, that that so, that, that may mean that they want to. My question is, is that what is the difference if it went to 15 or, and, and that's, I'm asking that of staff. I just, I, you know, it's, I, I'm just a firm believer in the Chesapeake regulations. And if you give Commissioner Walker, you could point three here, point four here, point five there, and we don't do justice to it. Commissioner Holt, kill it. Yes. Uh, who's speaking? Oh, Mr. Schneider. Okay. This is. Uh, I didn't get checked in. I don't know why I didn't get checked in. But this is Chuck Schneider from the Environmental Planning Section. Um, I didn't have you on the list. No matter. <laughs> no matter what this project would have done improvement-wise, it would have had to gone through the variance process, and this process. Um, the whole house is not being torn down. It's partially being torn down. So whatever the applicant wants to do, because it's over the, um, the maximum 15%, uh, it was previously 
built before regulations that would need to come before you for a variance request. Um, the accept, it, it really doesn't meet the narrowness, the uh, uniqueness yeah. of the property. The, the, very, the only thing is that it's meeting is uh, that the property was uh, built before the regulations and it's now trying to conform to get under that uh, uh, fit to the 15 percent or we're trying to get close to that 15 percent the uh, the length of the driveway is over it's almost close to over 200 feet long mm -hmm. and to minimize that driveway to get I mean the house is dry, we did the house all the existing structures in the patio area around that area is being reduced in size and the the thing is really hurting it is the the driveway situation getting down there I know that I've had a couple other projects that we've uh, asked the property owner to reduce the size of the driveway, make it narrower to reduce the impervious um, surface area. But over time, it just it doesn't uh, it doesn't work out. The thing is, it's over 200 feet long. If, it, if this was a smaller driveway and uh, uh, not a smaller, uh, yeah, just shorter, a shorter, drive. shorter. Um, it, it would the impervious surface area would be reduced, but um, the house area, the the parking area you see there, and the, all the various structures are being reduced. Uh, this property owner has gone well beyond what uh, I'm expecting some of these people that have had the existing houses in the critical area to do. But it's not a total tear down. They're saving portions of the house um, to build this property so I mean to build this new structure um, trying to figure out what other questions you had there but um, no, no, no. I, I, I understand I, I I was having troubles when I was doing the findings for the uniqueness of the narrowness and the way that's worded it really it, I'm trying I was trying really okay. hard to find out how this would conform to it but I mean it's just that the property was built before all the regulations and even before that wording came out. So. so, so let me ask. Let me make sure I understand. So, basically, Mr. Schneider, it's um, obviously the property was built before the the, the um, regulations came. The CBCA ordinance came into play, and so now, the, the in order to grant a variance, it has to meet those specified requirements, and um, and it may not be um, the the narrowness or the shallowness of the shape. But it could be, uh, there are other, or there's that caveat at the end, the catch-all at the end, other extraordinary situations or conditions. And that long driveway is a huge factor. And in my mind, it satisfies the requirement here because, because of that. That is correct. Okay. Because it you does, thank you, because it does have to meet the requirements. And, and in my mind, that particular, the driveway situation does satisfy that aspect of the required finding. You're correct. Um, okay, so that's just my opinion. I, I, you know, we, we may disagree, but um, um, so let me go back to Commissioner Geraldo if you have other questions. So one other question, uh, just one more, uh, Madam Chair. Okay. So am I correct that they have to put in about a quarter acre of new trees? Did I read that correctly? Chuck Schneider from the Environmental Planning Section. Uh, yes, they do. They need okay. to um, a forest on the property um, because there's no forest on the property as it is right now. And uh, they uh, they have to do the plantings uh, on the property, and they're going to be right now. They currently have it shown in the the front portion of the property. And uh, when I was reviewing it. We were going back and forth with it whether is. it had been the front and or in the hundred foot buffer, and uh, we came to the decision that it needs to be in the in the uh, the the hundred foot buffer area. Okay. A far station. Okay. okay. Th okay. Yeah, thank you. And the, the last question I have is I know I know from other properties along that area. What, was there any concern about any archaeological? Uh, uh, items that might be there. I mean, that whole strip, I know that there's land further down uh, Riverview that's on the, on the Potomac that there were uh, archaeological uh, items. 
And I was just wondering whether or not there was anything done here to consider uh, if there is any art, archaeological uh, artifacts on this property. Uh, good morning. This is Sherry Connor with the subdivision and zoning section. Um, given that the site was previously fully graded and disturbed and the proposed development will take place within the developed area, there was no archaeological concerns with this site. Okay, thank you. Yes. Are there any other questions? Um, okay, so if, if there are no other questions and there's no speakers, is there a motion? Madam Chair, this is Commissioner Washington. I move that we adopt the findings of staff and approve EP-93009-01 and variance to section 5B-114E8 along with the associated conditions as outlined in staff's report. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Washington, seconded by um, Vice Chair Bailey. Um, is there any discussion? Um, Madam Vice Chair? Aye. Um, Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Aye. Commissioner Dorner? Good eye. Okay, the ayes have it 5-0. Um, we will now go to item 6, which is um, Vacation 18005 Marlboro Gardens. I'm also going to do a check. Mr. Heath, it looks like it's your day today. Uh, Anton Heath? Okay, um, which which is interesting because he started during this this pandemic and we've yet to see him in person. But you're hitting the ground running, Mr. Heath. Um, Sherry Connor, present. Uh, Nate Foreman, right there. Mr. Foreman, we see him. Oh, okay. You see him? Yeah, but I don't hear him. He's muted. Oh, okay. He's muted. I see him. Up, scroll back to the top. Yeah. There he is. Okay. So how do we get him unmuted? Well, he's present. Okay, so let me just go down the list and while you figure that part out. Okay. Um, Mr. Mesog? Present. Okay, Mr. Ferguson. Yeah. Um, Gwendolyn Bowman. Here. Uh, Charles Farmer. Dr. Charles Farmer. Here. Um, Dr. Judy Farmer. Here. And then one more. Uh, Dr. Therese Farmer. Here. Is it Therese? Did I pronounce it correctly? Yeah, thank you. I uh, appreciate it. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, okay, so... Um, are we figuring out how to get Mr. Foreman? Uh, we should be doing it now. Uh, uh, Madam Chair. No, yeah, yes, Mr. Foreman. I, I just want to make sure we, you, we can hear you first. Oh, Mr. Taub, is that you? Yes, Madam Chair. I, I signed up uh, in time for this. I received a receipt. I didn't hear my name called. But no, I, I didn't have hear. you signed. Um, 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 hello? I don't have you signed up on this, but I'll, I'll, so you signed up in time, you said, Mr. Taub? Yeah, okay. I had a receipt, okay. you know, emailed to me, so okay. I don't know what okay. happened, but okay. I'm here. Sorry. The event, okay. Mr. Foreman can't get it. Okay, well, that's unmuted. good. Okay. So. Okay. Um, I unmuted my phone, Madam Chair. Can you hear me? This is uh, Nate Foreman. Yes, we can there hear you. Go. We can hear you. Okay. So either one of you. Uh, okay. Um, uh, Mr. Mr. Foreman will handle this. Thank okay. You. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so with that, Ms. Mr. Heath, you are on. Good morning, Madam. Oh, wait a minute. He has to come back. You have to unmute, unmute yourself again. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. For the record, I'm Anton Heath, senior final with the subdivision and zoning section. Item number six on the agenda is vacation petition for Marlboro Gardens the B-18005. The application requests to vacate parcels A, B, and C of Marlboro Gardens and part of Nova Avenue. Next slide, please. The site is located in the western part of Prince George's County within planning area 75A and Council District 7. Next slide, please. More specifically, 
Avenue. The site is located approximately 100 feet south of the intersection of Nova Avenue and Marlboro Pike. Slide, please. The site is located in the R18 multifamily medium density zone. To the north are businesses in the MUI mixed use infill zone. To the west is is Boundary Avenue and Lord Avenue with residential properties in the R55, one family detached residential and RT townhouse zones. To the south is the intersection of Boundary Avenue and Opus Avenue with residences in the R55 zone. And to the east, uh, beyond Opus Avenue, are residential properties in the R55 zone. Next slide, please. The area uh, the map shows the Property abuts Marlboro Pike uh, Center Plan Area Development District Overlay. Next slide, please. Photograph shows that the subject site is currently vacant and also shows the surrounding properties and roadways. Next slide, please. Site map shows that the it's a part of the site gradually slopes from the center of the property towards the northeast as well as the west and southwest. Next slide. The master plan right of way map shows the master plan collector roadway, Marlboro Pike, connects to the portion of Nova Avenue outside of the property boundary. Next slide, please. Exhibit A shows the existing record flat for parcels A, B, and C, and the portion of Nova Avenue outlined in red, which is which are proposed to be completed. Next slide. Exhibit is the plat of computation showing the total area of the vacated outline in red. Next slide. If this vacation's petition is approved, the applicant will be required to obtain approval of a minor plat, of a minor final plat, uh, incorporating the vacated area. This slide shows the draft minor plat, or draft minor final plat, submitted by the application. Uh, which depicts the consolidation of the area to be vacated and future dedica dedication of all this act for determinants of no avenue. In conclusion, the subdivision zoning staff recommends that the planning to adopt the findings and approve the Marlboro Gardens vacation petition V-18005 subject to the conditions contained in the staff report. This concludes staff presentation. Thank you, Mr. Heath. Um, let's see if there are any questions for you. Madam Vice Chair? No questions. Commissioner Washington? Uh, okay, no, I see. He, he mentioned condition, but I see it proceeds as, as final recommendation, so thank you. Okay. Um, Commissioner Dorner? No questions. Commissioner Geraldo? No questions, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, so Mr. Foreman. Hey, Madam Chair, members of the full, uh, planning board, uh, Nate Foreman with the office of O'Malley, Miles, Milan, and Gilmore with offices in Greenbelt. I'm um, here on behalf of the applicant in this case, and um, I do want to thank staff for all their hard work in uh, helping us get this first step of our long development process off the ground. And uh, want to state for the record that we agree with our complaining uh, staff recommendation and request that the um, planning board uh, approve our development application. Um, I know there are uh, members of the community and civic association on the uh, line here, so rather than kind of throwing on here, I, you know, if there's any other questions or concerns, I'm uh, more than willing to address them, but um, I just want to uh, ask the planning board for uh, request approval of this application. Okay, thank you, Mr. Foreman. I have two people signed up as proponents and then two, three with no position. So, um, Mark Ferguson, do you wish to speak? Or just, like you said, if there are any questions? No, ma'am, just answer questions. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have Gwendolyn Bowman from the Bradbury Boulevard Heights C uh, Civic Association signed up in support. Ms. Uh, Bowman? Hold on, we're getting to you. Ms. Hello. Okay, Ms. Bowman. Yeah. See, sometimes we don't. We can't tell what the if your name if you didn't put a name in. We we can't tell. We see callers with a, a number, but we don't know who it is. So, um, I think that 
Okay, so Ms. Bowman, you can go for it. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this is Gwen Bowman, president of the Bradbury Boulevard Heights Civic Association. Mm -hmm. And we're, it's the consensus of the membership that we're in agreement with vacationing that section of Nova Avenue that will run in the section of the Marlboro Gardens building. And we're looking forward to the development. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Bowman. Was, um, yeah. We appreciate it. Was that it? Yeah. We appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so then we have a couple other members of the Bradbury Boulevard Heights Civic Association. Um, uh, Dr. Charles Farmer, do you wish to speak? We're going to defer to uh, Dr. Therese Farmer. she have a lot of information. Okay. And um, we'll take it from there. Okay, so that's Dr. Charles Farmer who's deferring to Dr. Therese Farmer. Dr. Judy Farmer, is that your position as well? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, well, I'm glad you're all, all named Farmer since you're that close in proximity. <laughs> okay, with no masks. Okay. Okay. Dr. Therese Farmer, uh, would you wish to. Uh, we look yes. forward to hearing from you. Um, thank you, um, and, and greetings to all the board, and I see um, Mr. Lake Foreman. Um, I do. Uh, I would like to first thank Mr. Foreman for um, his communication and consistency um, with our family. Our family is the house on Exhibit B that is spot number one. Okay, hold um, on. I, hold, hold on a second. We're going to pull it up so that the board can see where your house is, okay? So we're going to um, catch up you. with you. Okay. So on exhibit B. And I should have... But I don't have exhibits. Um, you can also see it on exhibit A as well. Okay. And we are the, the corner, the lot one corner house of Nova Avenue and Boundary. Okay. 1442 address, 1442 Nova Avenue. Um, we've can, been you, in can, this, can, this you can you guide... Um, Mr. Flanagan, who's trying to put the cursor near your house, can you guide him? Can you see the cursor? That's it. Yes. Right? That's it. Um, yeah. If people go to that little, not not there, if people go to that little corner, right there, that little plot of land, uh -huh. move up a little, right there, that little space where it says lot one on the corner of boundary. I think it says on the older map, R Street. Yeah. That's it right there, because I can't read that print. Yes, it's a little bit further, but it's very, it's very, very small. Okay. Um, it, on the actual um, exhibit A, it's found stone. I don't know if you, you can see, see that, but it's that little spot. Is that yes, one right, right there? there? That's it right there. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, that's uh, Okay. Thank you. Um, we, we've been in this home um, for 40 years, um, 40 plus years, um, and, and I wanted to, like I said before, thank Mr. Nate Foreman for his communication mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and his um, who he represents for the property in regards to um, concerns or anything we have had in the past. So I wanted to say that first. Um, I also wanted to um, just add a question regarding the, the vacated property, which we are in favor of as a family. Mm -hmm. um, we have also spoken to some of our neighbors as well um, that live um, in the adjacent properties to um, the Marble Gardens, who is also who are also in favor of keeping it closed. Um, but we just want, our, our, our only concern was uh, maintaining the security of that spot that, is, that will be vacated in the future. Um, it has been um, nothing on the property since the apartments were originally raised many years ago. Um, but in um, many, over the years, there have been um, different, um, criminal activity that have occurred right there in the middle of the street where there are currently cement blocks. Um, for example, and we have worked with the local police department and the fire investigators on these issues. So our biggest thing is, would it be signage or cameras to deter people from um, congregating in that area because there have been barbecues prior to the holiday seasons there have been fire and fireworks prior to the 4th of July holiday, and there was an attempted arsonist, car um, um, arsonist um, activity that had happened there, and the police um, did inform us that this street was to be closed, that there would need to be some kind of surveillance, 
signage or cameras in that area to deter people from congregating in the air and trespassing yes. on the property. Um, I did speak to Mr. Foreman and the person he represents on maintaining the fencing, which they redid um, because people had cut the fencing and went into the property. So they did redo the fencing. Um, but after the attempted arson of a car that was left in the street right wow. on their side of the property, um, the police did um, inform me that more surveillance would need to happen to ensure that things like this doesn't occur in the future. Now, as a family, we have been proactive, and we would like to thank um, Ms. Bridget Miles at 311 for yes, accepting sir. our request of completing the no-dumping signs, the deer crossing signs, because the deer think that's the park now, so there's plenty of deer over that, so we requested deer crossing signs, and so that has um, assisted in um, different um, issues and people um, traveling through the neighborhood, not hitting the deers. Um, and then I would also like to thank Mr. Mark Fowler for assisting us with the traffic study that was completed so that we were able to get the lines in between Nova and Boundary um, and also the future upcoming speed bumps. Mm -hmm. And we just received our um, no parking signs on Boundary Avenue. Um, but that was my only question was um, based on the communication with the police officers and the fire investigators was um, what would be the continued or um, advanced surveillance and security of that particular vacated section of NOVA to ensure that um, the community is um, maintaining a safe environment um, and that even though we can be proactive, we are not always there and that since no one is currently living on the property to make sure that all um, people and residents are safe. And I um, thank the board for allowing us to speak as um, the farmer family um, at this location. Thank you. Well, let me just say this. It's wonderful to see very proactive people. So that's good. Uh, people who are, who uh, we all care about our homes, but people who have taken the necessary steps and reached out to the appropriate entities to, to get the assistance that you need. And apparently you've been very successful with that. So that's good. Congratulations on that. Some of what you have asked for, we, we, we the board, are not in a position to um, provide that kind of, or, or answer that question in terms of the, the security. Um, you, your conversations with Mr. Foreman hopefully have been productive, and he can, and we can also, assist, the way we can assist is from one government entity to another to, um, you know, see if we can get the the um, the, the county, the, the the police, and, and whatnot to, to continue to monitor there. Uh, Mr. Mr. Foreman, do you have some uh, solution, some advice? Um, yes, uh, Madam Chair, thank you very much. And I, I do, Dr. Farmer, I do want to thank you for um, you know, we've been surprised at the situation. Um, the arson and the fireworks that is actually unfortunately news to me, and I'm very sorry that that happened. Um, I do want to say that you know. When it comes to the immediate security measures, I'm more than happy to reach out to the uh, applicant and see what we can kind of do in the meantime. Um, I do want to let you know and, and reassure you that when we go forward with the development plan for this property, which we are doing, we will take into account security of not just our property, but neighboring properties too. Um, but, you know, I think we maybe, uh, you and I and our client, maybe should have a conversation offline about what to do about the current the property as it, as it is right now while it's being developed. Yes. Um, 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 thank you, Mr. Foreman. And we know that um, your client has even met us yes. at our home and met with us. Um, so we, we will be open to that communication mm -hmm. um, in the future. And we do have your contact information as well as your client. So uh, we will be reaching out to um, set up those appointments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, okay, with that, um, does, uh, let me see if the board has any questions of anyone thus far. Madam Vice Chair? Uh, Madam Chair, I don't have any questions, but I did notice that uh, the Civic Association, Association President, Ms. Gwen Bowman, is on, and she is certainly a good contact for them to continue communicating about uh, issues in that community. She is always on target. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, um, um, Commissioner Washington? No questions, Madam Chair. Uh, Commissioner Geraldo? No questions, Madam Chair. Commissioner Dorner? 
No questions. Mr. Foreman, is there anything else you want to say in conclusion? Uh, no, just uh, thank uh, you, Madam Chair, and the uh, the board for their time in uh, this matter. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the findings of staff and approve V-18005 along with the associated condition as outlined in staff's report. Second. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Washington, second by uh, Vice Chair Bailey. Um, Commissioner Washington? Aye. Com Vice Chair Bailey? Vote aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Vote aye. Um, Commissioner Dorner? Aye. The ayes have it 5 0. Thank you. Next, we have items. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we have item 7, which is detailed site plan 19060 for McDonald's um, Landover. Okay, so I'm going to do a check to make sure we have everyone. Adam Bossy. Yes, Madam Chairwoman, One, present. Okay, wonderful. Jill Kosak. Good morning, President. Thank you. Uh, Dan Lynch. Present. Okay, we do have Chuck Schneider signed up on this one. Um, Mr. Schneider. Present. Okay, Ben Ryan. Good morning, I'm present. Uh, Chris Howell? Present. Joseph Kirchow? Hold on. Mr. Kirchow? Good morning, present. Okay, did I pronounce it correctly? Yes, you did. Okay, thank you. Um, John Eidberger? Yes, present, thank you. Okay, um, Karen Peter? Yes, President. Okay. And that concludes the sign-up list for us for today. Mr. Bossi, you're on. Good morning, Madam Chairwoman and members of the Planning Board. Uh, for the record, again, I am Adam Bossi with the Urban Design Section. Uh, before you this morning is item number seven, detailed site plan DSP19060 for McDonald's Landover. This DSP proposes to raise the existing eating and drinking establishment with drive through service and replace it with a new slightly larger McDonald's restaurant. Slide two, please. The subject property is in planning area 72, Council District 5. Slide three, please. The subject site shown here in red, uh, is shown here in red, excuse me. Uh, the 1.17 acre site is located on in the northwest quadrant of the intersection of Maryland 214, that's Central Avenue, and Bright Seat Road. Slide four, please. The site is located, or excuse me, the site is zoned mixed use infill, the MUI zone, with single family residential development located to the north and commercial development on mixed use and industrial zone properties to the west and south. Beyond Bright Seat Road to the east is undeveloped land in the I-3 zone. Slide 5, please. Uh, the site is also within two overlay zones, the military installation overlay zone for height associated with Joint Base Andrews, and one of the development district overlay zones associated with the subregion for master plan and sectional map amendment. Uh, the site is within the development district overlay zone focus area for Central Avenue between Norair Avenue and Bright Seat Road. Slide six, please. Uh, this aerial photo shows the existing McDonald's building located in the western half of the subject site and oriented perpendicular to Central Avenue. This McDonald's was built on the site over 30 years ago. Since that time, the zoning of the site changed in a manner that no longer allowed the eating and drinking establishment use, and it was certified as non-conforming through a special exception approved in 1987. Uh, somewhat unique to this case is that while the DSP proposes to raise and construct a new eating and drinking establishment, the subregion 4 master plan includes an exemption that provides as long as the legally existing established use is not discontinued for 180 days or more, it is not subject to the development district standards or site plan review. Here the applicant has indicated that they intend to discontinue the use for less than that 180 day period to redevelop the site. That being said, this DSP focuses only on the physical changes proposed to the site 
as the use is legally established and intended to be continued. A detailed note about this master plan exemption is included in the development data summary on the top of page four of the technical staff report. Slide seven, please. Uh, as shown here on the topographic map, the subject site is relatively flat. Slide eight, please. Uh, here we have Central Avenue shown to the south of the site in red, which is an arterial road. And Bright Seat Road to the east of the site is shown in green and is classified as a collector roadway. Slide nine, please. Uh, as shown here, the existing McDonald's site includes three driveways, two connecting to Central Avenue, which are essentially flanking the building, and a third in the northeast corner of the site connecting to Bright Seat Road. There's also two sidewalk connections to Central Avenue adjacent to the building. Drive through service is routed to the north of the building with the service window on the west side of it. To the north, you can see that there is, the, there is an existing wooden fence along the property line between this development and the adjacent residential dwellings. Slide 10, please. The overall development plan for the site provides for raising of the existing building and constructing a new McDonald's. The new building will be 4,540 square feet, which is 178 square feet larger than the existing structure. The orientation of the proposed structure has its length parallel to Central Avenue. The Development District Overlay Zone includes a number of design guidelines and requirements geared toward the establishment of vibrant, pedestrian-friendly, mixed-use environments. While the proposed project generally conforms with the Development District Overlay Zone requirements, the applicant has requested amendments to certain requirements, uh, specifically those pertaining to the building envelope, siting of the structure, streetscape and loading space. Uh, for example, the proposed McDonald's uh, site does not conform with the overlay zone's 18-foot build two line requirement. As visible in this image, the building is set back farther than 18 feet from either of the adjacent roadways, and this is to accommodate the drive-through service lane and a bypass lane to the south and east of the building, uh, which we believe is appropriate for this type of development. Other features, such as an outdoor dining space with clear pedestrian connections to Bright Seat and Central Avenue, which are located on the east side of the building, and the orientation of the building parallel to Central Avenue are in line with the intent of the Development District Overlay Guidelines for defining the streetscape and, again, looking to improve the area for use by pedestrians. Uh, this McDonald's site is at the eastern terminus of the Development District Overlay Zone, so the provision of these pedestrian friendly elements, again, on the east side of the site are particularly important here, uh, where the site uh, acts as a, a entrance, if you will, to the development district where these types of features are ultimately desired by the master plan. Uh, excuse me, the, DDC, the DDOZ amendments requested by the applicant are discussed in detail on pages six through nine of the technical staff report. Slide 11, please. This rendered site plan provides a clearer view of the proposed development and key design features. The proposed building is shown in tan with the double drive through and ordering line located on the west side of the building and continuing to the service window on its south side. As shown, one of the site's driveway connections to Central Avenue has been removed. And as previously noted, on the east side of the building, the DSP does provide the outdoor eating area, bike racks, and crosswalk connections to Bright Seat Road and Central Avenue, uh, which are pedestrian-friendly site features encouraged by the Development District Overlay. A total of 48 parking spaces are provided to the north and west of the building, with a single loading space located west of the McDonald's building and north of the driveway connection to Central Avenue. Slide 12, please. Site lighting is proposed to be updated as part of this DSP. As shown in the photometric plan, sufficient lighting will be provided on site while limiting off site glare. Slide 13, please. Uh, as shown here, the single story McDonald's building is a total of 19 feet tall, again with that area of 4,540 square feet. Uh, this is again slightly larger than the existing building. Uh, the, facade, the facades are to be primarily clad with brick veneer and hardy plank siding in the complementary color scheme as shown in gray, brown, and black. Slide 14, please. A series of small directional signs is proposed for utilization around the site. 
An existing pylon sign located at the southeast corner of the site uh, is proposed to be maintained. Three building mounting signs, uh, identity signs, excuse me, are also provided. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, in conclusion, this detailed site plan for the redevelopment of this McDonald's eating and drinking establishment with drive through service conforms with the applicable requirements of the zoning ordinance and development district overlay zone subject to the conditions and findings uh, recommended in the technical staff report. Additionally, as noted in the presentation and detailed in the staff report, staff does support the applicant's requested amendments to the development district overlay zone requirements. Uh, it's our understanding that the applicant's team is in full concurrence with the findings and conditions of the staff report. And with that, Madam Chairwoman, staff is pleased once again to recommend that the planning board approve DSP 19060 for McDonald's Landover with the conditions included in the staff report. That concludes our presentation. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Bassi. That's a great flight. Okay. Um, Mr. Lynch? Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. For the record, Dan Lynch with the law firm of McNamee Hosey here on behalf of McDonald's Corporation. Um, with me, I have Joe Curdo uh, with McDonald's, John Eidberger with Seven, and then also Chris Howell, uh, our civil engineer with Kimley Horn. Um, as indicated by Mr. Bossy, McDonald's Corporation is in concurrence with the staff's findings and the proposed conditions and recommendation. Um, as you know, um, you've seen many of these uh, applications come through. This is part of an overall a modernization program that McDonald's is implementing at various sites throughout Prince George's County and actually throughout the entire country. Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Bossy. Um, he came up with some excellent suggestions, which we ended up incorporating into overall site plan. And I think it led to a much better plan in the end. Um, but with that, uh, we're here to answer any questions you have. Again, we have both representatives of McDonald's and the civil engineering firm in the event there are any uh, questions or comments from the board. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm, uh, thank you, um, Mr. Lynch. I'm going to see if the board has any questions of either Mr. Bossy or you, Mr. Lynch. Uh, Madam Vice Chair? Not at this time. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, Commissioner Washington? No questions. Commissioner Geraldo? Madam Chair, I have no questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Dorner? No questions. Okay. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, and and, and uh, Mr. Um, Eidberger? Yes, this is John Eidberger, and I'm representing the applicant. Okay. And, and, and okay, so and so all of you and Ms. Peter and Mr. Curto and uh, Mr. Howell are all here if there's any questions. Is that correct? Okay, I think that's, yes, I think that's what Mr. Lynch said. Thank okay. You. Okay. So uh, if the board has any no questions and Mr. Bossy, you have nothing else to add? No, ma'am. Thank okay. you. Okay. So let's, um, let's go. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the findings of staff and approve the alternative development district standards as outlined in staff's report items A1 through 8. In addition to approving DSP-19060, along with the condition as outlined in staff's report. Second, Bailey. Okay. okay, so Madam Vice Chair, um, um, motion by Commissioner Washington, seconded by Madam Vice Chair. Uh, Madam Vice Chair? But aye. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Dorner? But aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Vote aye. Okay, the ayes have it 5-0. Um, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so next we're going to item 12. Thank you. 12. Thank you. Next we're going to item 12, which was formally um, 4D. Um, and that is um, final plat 5-91004 grayling, comma, parcel A variation. Um, Sherry Connor, are you on? Yes, present. Okay, Mr. Gibbs, are you on? Uh, good morning, uh, Madam Chair. Yes, that gives your I am on. Okay, and and um, Mark Ferguson. We're scrolling down, looking for you, Mark Ferguson. Uh, Madam Chair, this is Ed Gibbs again. Uh, I had asked Mark 
Ferguson to be available for any questions. Okay. Uh, I think he is on, but I don't know that he's unmuted. Okay, so we're, we're trying to find him on the screen here. Um, everybody's unmuted, so Mark Ferguson? Okay, well, all right, if you need him, Ed, you'll have to find him. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Okay, so Mr. Masog? Present, Madam Chair. Brian Barnett Woods? Present. Okay. And then we have two exhibits. We have the letter from Mr. Gibbs dated um, July 8, 2020, and we have proposed revised conditions. So they will be applicants' exhibits um, one and two. Uh, okay. Um, so, Ms. Connor, do you want to go forward? Yes, good morning once again, Madam Chair, members of the board. For the record, this is Sherry Connor with the subdivision and zoning section. As you indicated, item 12 is the final plat of subdivision for Grayling Parcel A, which has been filed in conformance with section 24111C of the subdivision regulations for the resubdivision of a plat recorded prior to October 27, 1970. It's been filed along with a variation request from section 24. 121A3 of the subdivision regulations for direct access to an arterial roadway. The site is proposed for redevelopment as a consolidated storage facility. The two exhibits provided by the applicant will be discussed further in this presentation. Next slide, please. The site is located in the northern area of Prince George's County within count planning area 69 and Council District 5. Next slide, please. More specifically, the site is located on the south side of Maryland 450 Annapolis Road at the intersection with 68th Avenue. Next slide, please. The site is located within the MUI zone and surrounded by properties in the MUI and R18 zone. Next slide, please. The site is also located within the Development District Overlay Zone, subject to the 2010 approved Central Annapolis Road Sector Plan. Next slide, please. The aerial photograph shows the subject site is currently developed with building used as a daycare, which is to be raised. Surrounding properties are developed with commercial uh, uses abutting the site to the northeast and the southwest, and multifamily development southeast of the site. Next slide, please. The site map shows the topographical features of the subject site with steep slopes falling to the east. Next slide, please. The master plan right of way map shows Maryland 450, an arterial roadway abutting the site to the north. Section 24121A3 of the subdivision regulations requires that when lots are proposed on land adjacent to an existing or planned roadway of arterial higher classification, they shall be designed to front on an interior street or service road. The applicant is requesting a variation from this requirement to maintain access for Maryland 450 as no other roadways above the site. The required findings for approval of the variation are further outlined on pages 7 through 9 of the technical staff report. In accordance with the requirements of 20, section 24111C, a transportation analysis was conducted including vehicular and bike, bike, bicycle and pedestrian adequacy for the site and determine that adequate transportation facilities will exist to serve the site with the recommended conditions. Next slide, please. This is a bird's eye view uh, showing the existing development on the site, which is to be raised. Next slide, please. The current plat shows the site as lot seven of the Grayling subdivision recorded in 1960. Next slide, please. The proposed plat depicts the property with its boundaries unchanged. Water, sewer, police, and fire and rescue facilities are found to be adequate to serve the subject site. Staff recommends approval of the final plan of subdivision 5-19004 for Grayling Parcel A and the variation from section 24121A3 subject to the conditions contained in the staff report. Mr. Gibbs for the applicant has provided a letter dated July 8, 2020 outlining additional information relevant to the site including a recently approved detailed site plan, which was conditioned to provide additional space within the proposed building for office use. Although this, although this information was not provided or analyzed during the review of this final plat application, the proposal provides for a marginal change to the site's trip generation, and staff agrees that the findings and condition may be updated to reflect the additional area 
and vehicle trips, which will have no impact on the adequacy of transportation facilities for the site. Mr. Gibbs has also provided a revised conditions exhibit reflecting the increased trip cap in condition one, which staff is in agreement with, and revisions to condition three for the timing of the installation of a bus shelter and its improvements. Although staff is not in agreement with the language provided for the, by the applicant for condition three, staff has uh, revised language that is acceptable and was coordinated with the applicant which I will read into the record. Condition three should be revised to state, prior to the approval of any building permit for development within the subdivision, the applicant, their heirs, successors, and or signs shall show that all required off-site adequate pedestrian and bikeway facilities listed below have A, full financial assurances, B, have been permitted for construction through the applicable operating agency's access permit process, and C, have an agreed upon timetable for construction and completion with the appropriate operating agency. A, a shelter ready bus stop location for the bus stop at 68th Avenue and Maryland 450 Annapolis Road in accordance with the Department of Permitting, Enforcement and Inspections and Department of Public Works and Transportation Standards, and B, a bus shelter at the bus stop at 68th Avenue and Maryland 450 Annapolis Road in accordance with DPWNT practices. This concludes staff's presentation. So, um, okay, Ms. Connor, so, um, so you were taking some of his suggestions um, and and applying them to the conditions as set forth on um, page nine of the staff report, and it would um, start with prior to it wasn't it wasn't prior to um, it was prior to permits. What was it? Prior to any building prior permit. To building. Go ahead. Yes, prior to the approval of any building permit for development within the subdivision. Okay, got it. Okay, let's see if there are any questions of you. Um, Madam Vice Chair? No questions, thank you. Commissioner Washington? No questions, thank you. Com um, Commissioner Geraldo? No questions, Madam Chair. Commissioner Dorner? No questions. Okay, um, all righty then. Mr. Gibbs? Hold on, we're trying to unmute you. Okay. Mr. Gibbs? Okay, great. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Uh, yes, uh, Chairwoman Hewlett and members of the board. Edward Gibbs, uh, an attorney with Offices of Largo, uh, representing the applicant, uh, JSF Management LLC, here this morning. Uh, my letter of July 8th goes into uh, greater detail uh, mm -hmm. it, it, relative to the trip cap. When we did the detailed site plan, which we'll probably remember for this consolidated storage facility back in January, uh, we, we did talk about trip generation there, um, but we appreciate staff working with us on, on the trip cap issue here because we, uh, not they, but we did not include the two a.m. and 2 p.m. trips attributable to the 1,000 square foot community office incubator space. Uh, so it's, it's a marginal increase in the trip cap. It doesn't affect the uh, critical uh, uh, level of the CLVs uh, uh, at any intersection and doesn't impact the uh, level of service uh, which exists in this uh, at, at the intersection of 68th and 450th. So we would appreciate being able to just increase those those uh, two trips to accurately reflect the trip generation. Uh, relative to the condition number three, um, I only have two comments. And I did, uh, the first comment I did speak with uh, Ms. Connor about, uh, or communicate via email about yesterday. The, uh, I, I had a conversation with uh, Dallas Abraham on Depot yesterday afternoon. And uh, relative to permitting of the bus shelter, you know, we had actually proffered the bus shelter as a, uh, 
pedestrian bike facility uh, for this project, and we are fully supportive of that. What Mr. Abraham told me uh, yesterday afternoon is that um, relative to the bus shelter, he told me that if DPI is involved in this, uh, there will never be a permit for the bus shelter because their contractor will actually do the installation. Um, so I, I had originally uh, proposed putting the words, quote, if required, close quote, after the phrase that Ms. Connor read, which states, feet have been permitted for construction through the applicable operating agency's access permit process. I proposed putting in the words, if required. Um, he correctly came back and said, well, uh, as we've redrafted condition three, it just, it just mimics the applicable language of section 24124.01e, and she is absolutely correct. Um, so I, just as long as everybody understands that whatever the appropriate operating agency is going to require is what we're going to do. I just don't want to be in a situation where, where we come back and say, wait a minute, you never got a permit for the bus shelter, and I'm sitting there saying, well, there is no permit. Uh, so that, cl that clarification, and I think staff is fine with that. The only other item I would say is that is that we had proposed a bus shelter just west of the site, which is near 68th Avenue and 450. The only thing I would say is that the way the condition reads, 68th Avenue is on the other side of 450. Um, and you had included a condition in our detailed site plan approval that required us prior to certification of the site plan to submit an exhibit showing the proposed location uh, for the bus shelter. Um, so I have no problem with this language as long as everybody understands that the ultimate location is going to be approved either by DPI or the State Highway Administration. And it will be in the vicinity of the area where 68 hits 450, but it's going to be on the south side of 450, not the north side. With that being said, uh, I'm fine with staff's amended conditions. And I, I appreciate that uh, Ms. Connor is able to work with us to get this resolved yesterday afternoon. Thank you very much. Um, so, Ms. Connor, can, the two concerns raised by Mr. Gibbs, can they be addressed as, um, as findings? Uh, the, the two, uh, regarding the, the, loca the precise location, he's saying it's going to be in the vicinity of 68th, number one. And number two, you know, to address the issue of the, of the permit, um, if, if they, so if it can be clearly um, set forth in the findings so that any subsequent body co coming along, um, you know, there's a record of it. And number two, um, um, Mr. Gibbs, I'm going to write down that you that you said, I'm writing this down, that you said Ms. Connor is absolutely correct. Okay. That's in my notes now. <laughs> okay. That is true. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so we can add those findings. Okay. And that should address, you know, and, and eliminate any confusion later on. Okay. Um, so let's no, see if the board. Okay. So let's see if the board has any questions. Um, Madam Vice Chair. No questions, thank you. Commissioner Washington? No questions. Uh, Madam Chair, did you, are we going to label for purposes of, of um, information applicant exhibit number one, the proposed? The, the letter was, the letter was um, applicants exhibit number one, and the proposed revised conditions were, were exhibit number two. Okay, thank you for that thank you. clarification. No questions. Okay. Um, okay, Commissioner Dorner? Yeah, I just want to make sure that you had asked the question, but I don't know if um, Ms. Connors completely answered whether or not there were, everything else was totally um, fine on the two conditions. Um, so staff is in agreement with condition one proposed by uh, Mr. Gibbs, the revisions, um, and condition three should be revised as I had read into the record. Right, exactly. Okay, and there, and there was no other problems that you had with with anything else that Mr. Gibbs had I proposed? No. Okay. All right, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I think that that concluded um, um, the parties wishing to speak. I don't know that Mr. Maysog or Mr. Bryant and Barnett Woods had anything to, to add. Are you all okay with where this... Mr. Mason. Nothing, uh, this is Tom Maysod, uh, nothing to add. 
Thank you. And this is Brian, nothing to add. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, if, if Mr. Gibbs, you have nothing else to add, I'm going to call for a motion. Thank you very much. I'm fine. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion? Yeah. Madam Chair, Commissioner Washington, uh, I move that we adopt the findings of staff and that the findings be amended uh, based on the recent discussion and testimony regarding um, uh, the, the revisions to condition um, number one as outlined in applicant exhibit number two, in addition to two findings being added which address the location of the bus stop and the permits, uh, the timing of permits. Um, and with that approved final plan of subdivision 5-19004 and variation from section 24-121A3 along with the associated conditions as outlined in staff's report and condition number one, as I mentioned earlier, further revised by applicant exhibit number two, condition two is outlined in staff's report and then con condition three as revised and read into the record uh, by staff. We have a motion. Second. We yeah. have a second by Madam um, Vice Chair. Um, uh, I'm going to call the call for the vote. Um, Madam Vice Chair. But aye. Commissioner Washington. Aye. Commissioner Dorner. Aye. Commissioner Geraldo. Aye. Okay, the ayes have it five zero. Um, so I think. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think what we should do at this point in time, it, it's it's a, a almost quarter to twelve, is take um, just a few minutes uh, uh, bio break, health break, and then come back and we we'll start with item eight, and then we'll go to nine, ten, and three A. Okay, does that work? So Works. Okay, ten minutes. Okay, thanks. Did you hear that? Yeah, okay. We're good. Camera's on. Mic is on. Okay. There she is. <laughs> Loving her hat. <laughs> okay, so it's one down. Where's the rest uh, of our peeps? Oh, I like we don't have I mean, oh, my view is different, okay. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, we do. Oh, so all we need is that. May I say you all look marvelous? Right back to you. <laughs> <laughs> the things that make us happy. It's the, it's the small things. I, I got a mind. I was looking for a census bow tie, but I couldn't find any. Ah, well. This is I, I would guess that Manny probably already has one, though. We'll look into that. If not, he will create one. That's oh, sure. so David, is, David, are you saying you want one, or you like it, or both? Okay. Okay, I what? hear. Here he is. Okay, so we got Manny there. Okay. So Manny, Manny looks like one of these those little bike riders in E.T. The, the, the guys who are carrying E.T. over in front of the moon. Okay. All right, let me, okay, let's get back to work here. So we have our board um, back and present, and then our next item on the agenda is um, um, item eight, which is um, SDP 1601-03 Parkside, section four. I am going to check to make sure we have everyone that we need. We have Andrew Bishop, are you on? Yes, Madam Chair, present. Okay. Jill Kosak, are you on? Present. Um, Rob Antonetti, are you on? Yes, Madam Chair, I'm here. Okay. Kim Finch, are you on? Kim Finch. There she is. Kim Finch? She's, she's muted. Okay. Kim? Yes, I'm on. Okay, I'm on. wonderful. Um, Glenn Burton? Present. Uh, Noelle Smith?
I don't really see her, but you've got it, right? You've got it, Mr. Burton. Okay. She might be on there, but you, you can keep checking. <laughs> Helen, Helen Hassan? Uh, let's see where it says Helen. Helen Hassan? Okay. All right. Rachel Letzinger? She's muted. Rachel Letzinger? She's, you have her muted. Okay, Rachel, you have to unmute yourself. All right, I'm going to come back. Um, Vasim Katan? I'm present. Okay, Keith Tunnel? Tunnel? Keith? Okay. Um, Arthur Horn? Madam Chair, Rachel, Keith, and Arthur are with the applicant, but uh, they're really only there to, to listen or answer questions if, if asked. So okay. Um, I'll, okay. I'll fill in if necessary if they okay. can't unmute or join. Okay. Um, Wes Guckert? Present. Okay. That's what I call loud and clear. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Guckert. Okay. Um, now that concludes the sign up list. Um, um, and, and if you need them, Mr. Antonetti, you can, um, well, you'll figure out how to get them. Okay. Um, so with that, we do have um, two exhibits. We have um, Applicants Temporary Trail Signage Exhibit, which we'll call Applicants Exhibit Number 1. And then we have Applicants Proposed Revised Conditions, which we will call Applicants um, propo um, Exhibit Number 2. And both are accepted into the record. Okay. And the D oh, excuse me, and the DPI referral dated um, July 1st, 2020, and that would be, um, I guess, I guess that's, who, did you submit that, Mr. Antonetti? No, that'll, uh, uh, I did not. Okay, that, we'll, that call it, we'll, we'll call it, we'll call it staff exhibit number one. Okay. Thank you. Uh, with that, um, um, Okay, with that, Mr. Bishop, you are on. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the planning board. For the record, Andrew Bishop with the urban design section. Item 8 is an SDP application which proposes the development of a mixed retirement development consisting of 188 single family detached and 96 single family attached dwellings in section four of Parkside. The applicant has submitted additional information prior to the Wednesday deadline and will be proposing revised conditions and is prepared to discuss these and the exhibits if it is if the board would like the applicant to elaborate on them. Slide two please. The site is in Planning Area 78, Council District 6. Slide 3, please. The property is located on the east and west sides of Melwood Road, south of West Valley Road. Slide 4, please. The site is in the RM zone within Section 4 of the larger Parkside development. This section of Parkside is surrounded by single-family detached homes and vacant land to the north east by section 7 of Parkside, west by section 2, and proposed Rock Spring Drive, and south by section 3 and Central Park Drive. Slide 5, please. The site is in the noise impact zone and the height zone, D and E, of the military installation overlay zone, which requires the residential development to meet specific requirements. The proposed single-family detached and attached buildings meet these regulations and are further discussed on page 11 of the technical staff report. Slide 6, please. 
This aerial shows the property which is currently under construction and is outlined on the slide here in red. Slide 7, please. The site includes varied topography and the impacts to the regulated environmental features on site have been previously approved and no new impacts are proposed with this application. Slide 8, please. This slide shows the master plan rights of way which abut the property. These include the proposed collector Rock Spring Drive west of the site shown in green and the major collector of Central Park Drive in blue. Slide 9, please. This exhibit shows the overall site plan of the Parkside development with Section 4 highlighted in yellow, showing its relationship to the rest of the community. For orientation purposes, you can see that this portion of the development is centrally located and directly north of Section 3 and north of the future Central Park. Slide 10, please. This is the illustrative site plan submitted with the application and shows the single family attached and detached dwellings on the site, which are arranged in a modified grid pattern. The development includes a number of open spaces and pocket parks with passive and active recreational facilities for the residents. The Melwood Legacy Trail is a 10 foot wide hiker biker trail, which runs through the middle of section four and forms the spine of the community linking the development to sections five and six south of the subject site. Slide 11, please. A mix of single family attached and detached alternatives are proposed with the application and are designed with master down options to appeal to the senior population. The following elevations were provided by the applicant and show the character of the proposed buildings. This, this slide shows the three front loaded two car garage models that are proposed for the 96 single family attached dwellings, including the flow, awaken, and connect models. Slide 12, please. This slide shows the rear elevation of these models. Slide 13, please. And lastly, this slide shows the proposed side elevations. Slide 14, please. The following slides will show the single family detached models proposed with the application. This slide shows the adventurer. Slide 15, please. Multiple elevations are available for this model and offer a variety of architectural options. Slide 16. This slide shows the single family detached model, the curator. Slide 17, please. Again, multiple elevations are offered and include balanced fenestration, enhanced window trim, and roofed porches over the front doors. Slide 18, please. This slide shows the third single family detached model, the enthusiast. Slide 19, please. The alternative elevation shown here proposed different roof lines and porch options. Slide 20, please. Lastly, this slide shows the fourth single family detached model, the virtuoso. Slide 20, please. The alternative elevations shown here propose a variety of different building materials. All the architectural elevations for the single family attached and detached models have been evaluated by staff and have been found acceptable. Slide 22, please. This exhibit highlights the pedestrian and road network of the community and includes sections of the roadways proposed with the application. The vehicular roadways are shown here in red and the pedestrian network is shown in blue and green. In conclusion, the urban design section recommends the planning board adopt the findings of this report and approve specific design plan SDP 1601-03 and type 2 tree conservation plan TCP 2014-2016-03 for Parkside section 4 subject to the conditions found in the staff report. The applicant has proposed revised condition language which is included in your backup and has been reviewed by staff and staff is in agreement with the proposed language. This concludes staff's presentation. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Bishop. Let's see if there's any questions. Madam Vice Chair? No questions, Madam Chair. Commissioner Washington? Uh, yes, if we could go back to slide 13, please. I believe that's the one with the flow, connect, and awaken. Yeah, and, and just looking at the fenestration illustrated here, I'm wondering what's in the, what's in the upper portion of those homes above the two windows? On, the, on these slides, it's um, it, it looks like it's a vinyl slide siding option. I'll let the no, applicant. No, 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 I, no I'm, I'm wondering what 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 the is it actually a room? Because there are no windows on the upper portion of the home. Exactly. Yeah, in those areas. I'm going to let Mr. Antonetti address um, that question. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bishop. Uh, yeah, because it looks, uh, I would be curious to hear what Mr. Antonetti has to say. Thank you. No further questions, Madam Chair. Okay, um, Commissioner Dorner? No questions. Commissioner Geraldo? Commissioner Geraldo? No questions. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Antonetti, you're on. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the Planning Board. Uh, for the record, Robert Antonetti with the law firm of Ship Lane Horn. We're pleased to represent the applicant, SHF project owner, for this section four. Uh, with me today, I have uh, we have Mr. Bass and Catan. Uh, Keith uh, Tanau may be on the line. He's with uh, the builder, uh, Rachel Leitzinger uh, with Dewberry, Wes Gucker, um, our, our uh, transportation engineer. And uh, John Ferrante is uh, with me in uh, cyberspace, but he is uh, an essential part of the Ship Lane Horn team. I just wanted to thank him for his work on this. Uh, I'd also like to thank Mr. Bishop uh, for his thorough review of the application and his willingness to interact with the applicant as we prepare for today's hearing. It's always appreciated. Uh, and again, I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but um, I, I continue to be thoroughly impressed uh, with the staff, the planning board, and the technical aspects of these hearings. Uh, it is, it is quite, uh, it's quite a feat to do these uh, week to week, and um, you do it so seamlessly and professionally, and it's greatly appreciated. Thank you for everything that you do. Thank um, you, Mr. Antonetti. With, appreciate it. With regards to uh, Section 4, as Mr. Um, Bishop stated, uh, this is uh, the third revision uh, of this uh, specific design plan. We are so excited to bring this forward. This is the Mitch Retirement Development, or MRD, portion of the Parkside project, at least the portion that's controlled by the applicant. And, uh, you know, the site is selling well. The project overall is selling very well. It's one of the top-selling communities in Maryland. It was the top-selling community in Maryland prior, prior to COVID-19. I'm not sure how, those, how that data is tracking right now, but it's doing very well. Uh, the Mitch Retirement component is a condition of the zoning. It is required. Uh, to be located uh, within the certain portions of the project. Section 4 is that portion of the project for our purposes, and it will be age-restricted uh, uh, with the appropriate covenants uh, for 55 and older. Uh, the project today is very exciting because, um, as you know, uh, we, the development is very expensive. It's, uh, the Parkside site is on a beautiful rolling hill-type uh, layout overall. And uh, the site development is quite expensive for any section, uh, market, market or mixed retirement. Um, it's been challenging to find a mixed retirement partner or builder who would be able to build and offer a lot price to justify the development costs overall for, uh, for bringing something to mar uh, market. Uh, fortunately, we have that situation here. And the elevations that you have seen, uh, I hope you would agree, um, are, are very exciting uh, and very uh, very interesting and, and well diversified uh, product elevation types that we think will be incredibly well received in the market um, and within the aging population uh, of the county and, and the region. So um, we expect this to fall, fall uh, to, to meld seamlessly with the overall fabric and success of the Parkside project to date. Um, with regards to the elevations that are were shown, we do have slide 13 in front. Um, so what is above um, uh, Commissioner Washington uh, is living space uh, shown on that elevation. And uh, while there's no window shown there, um, there is conditions in the staff report uh, dealing with high visibility lots and, and, and wall features. 
Um, you know, these are these these aren't fully optioned uh, elevations, so uh, so changes to the side elevations are, are possible. Um, you know, as uh, as buyers you know select what they what their preferences be um, when they when they go to contract. Uh, you know, with regards to the project overall, and you know, while it is part of Parkside, um, there are ample amenities. It's quite a well amenitized section. Um, you did hear about uh, see a slide about the pedestrian connectivity, um, including um, internal trails, connector trails, uh, and the master plan trail, which is the Melwood Legacy Trail. Melwood Legacy Trail is essentially following the road alignment of uh, historic Melwood Road, and it continues through the Central Park, which is a, a large kind of regional park area that um, has been dedicated uh, to the commission. And so it will it will be a connection to that to the northernmost uh, uh, portion of the project. Um, there are other other amenities um, that are significant that include, um, in addition to the open spaces shown, there's a picnic pavilion, exercise stations, a butterfly garden, a dog park, bocce ball court, and then there's also a sitting area with uh, with a pavilion as well. Um, so so these amenities, while they are not uh, exclusive to Section Four. Uh, in other words, we can't uh, prohibit other members of the Parkside community from using them. Uh, they are approximate to Section 4, and Section 4 being kind of the northernmost, uh, or uh, the northeasternmost quadrant of this large project, uh, will very likely be uh, mainly utilized uh, by the uh, by the age-restricted uh, senior component that will be populating Section 4 if this application is approved. Um, the H, uh, there will be an HOA, a separate HOA uh, for this uh, section. The HOA will maintain um, landscape elements, um, the front and side yards, and there will be an option for maintenance of the rear yard. Um, so some of these homes may have fenced rear yards, if that's an option of, of the owner. If they do, um, they'll, they'll uh, either maintain it themselves and you know, plant their own gardens and landscaping, um, or uh, they'll have the option to have that maintained as well. But the HOA will maintain other aspects of this. Uh, Eric, uh, with with that again, we're very excited. Uh, I won't belabor um, the uh, the presentation, but uh, we're we're very excited to move this forward with your support. Um, we do have some recommended condition changes. Otherwise, um, Mark is applicant to the two. Otherwise, we uh, believe that the application meets all the requirements of the zoning ordinance for approval in SCP, including past uh, past conditions and. Um, I can go through the uh, condition changes um, at the discretion of the board um, quickly or, or, or not. Uh, but staff is in agreement with the language, um, and we are uh, uh, very thankful for the uh, opportunity to present this today. Um, the rest of our team, we're here to answer any questions that you may have. And uh, you know, we look forward um, and, and urge your support for this uh, wonderful application. So thank okay. you, thank you for your time, and I'll be willing to go through the conditions if that would be the preference. M Mr. Antonetti, just succinctly, if you could, I think the first one is fine. One C is fine because it says unless modified by DPI, which makes sense. And then you have a, a lot of deletions. Um, and and yes. okay. Um, yes. So. Uh, the, the deletions really are, are in recognition of it. There was a plan set, as you know, um, materials need to be resubmitted no later than 35 days prior to the mm -hmm. hearing. There was a subsequent plan set that contained many of these details. And in, the, and in an exercise of efficiency, we wanted to make sure that any uh, pre-certification conditions, you know, accurately reflect the plan set that the staff actually had as part of their review. Okay. So um, condition 1B, um, E, F. Um, all those either materials or changes to the plans have already been made. So uh, I think staff recognized after uh, a conference call that yes, they have all that material that is sufficient. <laughs> and then um, obviously 1K is, is important to us, um, so that's fine. So all the other deletions. Um, and then 2 makes sense because whichever approval is last. Um, yes. Okay, three. Uh, let's uh, go to three. 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 Let's go to Sorry. three. Can you just touch on three and that's I think that's about it certainly um, condition condition three is about the Melwood legacy trail and the timing for it um, since since the since it's following generally the location of historic Melwood Road it does run through the middle of the project um, which which is fine and we can we design uh, with that in mind however since it's in the middle of the project uh, we wanted to make sure that the construction of it is phased in a way that it would not be um, uh, 
that it would not interfere with the development of the remainder of the, of, of the project of the homes and would not invite individuals to kind of traverse construction areas. Uh, so what we've done is we separated a northern and a southern portion of it, um, leading to each respective boundary lines, and we've offered uh, uh, permit triggers to make sure that there's teeth to it, that, uh, that the master plan trail is provided uh, in a timely but appropriate fashion. So that's what this condition um, recommends uh, and, and reflects those condition triggers that we've discussed with staff for the northern and southern portion of this trail. Okay. Okay, got it. Um, so again, I think that was applicant's exhibit number two. Um, and okay, so let's see if the board has any questions of you. Madam Vice Chair? No questions at this time, thank you. Commissioner Washington? No questions, and thank you, Ms. Antonetti. Um, Commissioner Dorner? No questions. Commissioner Geraldo? No questions. Okay. All right, well, that's it. So, and, and none of your folks um, are, are to speak at this time, right? Uh, that, that is correct. They, okay. they're, with, uh, they're with us. Okay, <laughs> so if no one else has anything to add, like Mr. Burton uh, or Ms. Finch, um, is the, I don't know, if, or, or um, Mr. Bishop, if you have anything to, to, to respond to, please say so now, or else I'm calling for a motion. Nothing to add, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, is there a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the findings of staff and approve SDP-1601-03 and TCP-2-014-2016 along with the associated conditions as outlined in staff's report and as further amended by applicant exhibit number two. We have a motion. Yeah. And a second by Commissioner uh, to Vice Chair Bailey. Um, Vice Chair Bailey? But I. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Dorner? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Geraldo? Aye. Okay, the ayes have it. 5-0. Um, um, okay, so the next items on our agenda are, are items um, 9 and 10, um, and then followed by 3A. So nine, item I is, 9 is a waiver of the rules for the Beach Tree Preliminary Plan 4-09041 and immediately followed by the request for reconsideration um, for the same preliminary plan. Um, I, am, I uh, am going to recuse myself from this matter. I want the record to so reflect. Um, this plan, this um, preliminary plan was approved during the time that I was in the private sector with the same firm and I worked on this particular preliminary plan from the from the from the um, perspective of the private um, sector and representing this client um, in an abundance of caution I consulted with the uh, State Ethics Commission and private counsel prior to returning to the Commission and throughout um, and this is one of the ones since I worked on personally that I will have to recuse myself from so I want the record to so reflect and I'm going to turn this matter, both of those matters, over to the Madam Vice Chair Bailey, and then I will return for item 3A. So, um, Madam Vice Chair, you are on. Thank you, Madam Chair, and we're on for item A, and we will now consider a request that we reconsider our approval of preliminary item of subdivision 409041 for Beach Tree CSC parcel. In order to consider the, re the request, the board must first waive its rules because Section 10A of our rules requires the request for reconsideration be made by a party or record within 14 calendar days of the final decision. If the board agrees to waive its rules, the board would then consider item 10. I would first like to check to see if we have all required persons available to discuss this item. Uh, let's see if we have from our staff. Uh, Mr. Heath, I think, and Ms. Connor, are you present? Present. Present. I did hear Ms. Connor. Okay, and Attorney Antonetti from Shipland Horn. Yes, present. Okay, Mr. Masoff from our staff. Present. Okay, let's see if all speakers are here. Lynn Hart uh, from Lynn Hart Traffic and Consultant. Present. And is that Bill Anthony? Is that someone who needs to be here? I don't hear Mr. Anthony. 
What about Dan Daniel Jackson? Present. Okay. All right, it seems like we have everybody that It seems like we have everybody that we need to have here. Uh, I would first like to go to staff, Mr. Heath, as you explained to us by the applicant requesting a waiver, and then we will ask if anyone from the applicant's team is interested in speaking. As a reminder, the first item is only a discussion of the applicant's request. We waive our rules. The request for reconsideration will be discussed as the next item the board agrees to waive the rules. Mr. Heath. Uh, yes, good afternoon, Madam Vice Chair, uh, members of the board, and Spawn Heath Senior Final Subdivision and Zoning Section. As, as you just said, item number nine on the agenda is a request for, waive, for uh, a waiver of the rules of procedure and item uh, and, and is a reconsideration request for preliminary plan of subdivision 4 09041, uh, Beach Tree CSC parcel. Also, approved the preliminary plan on January 13, 2011, uh, and the resolution was adopted on February 10, 2011. Uh, by the date of June 10, 2020, Mr. Antonetti is representing the applicant. So, we approved the rules of procedure first and have granted a reconsideration of conditions 7, 12, and 13A through D, and finding 8 with the resolution on the basis of inadvertence or other good cause. Uh, these conditions and uh, findings are related to the vehicular trips and transportation improvements required for the subdivision uh, as in staff's June 30, uh, 2020 memorandum and the applicant's request. Uh, if uh, the request for the waiver of the rules of procedure and the reconsideration request for the preliminary plan are granted, staff will provide further analysis on the merits of the request at a later planning board hearing. This concludes staff's presentation. Thank, thank you, Mr. Heath. Uh, are there any questions from members of the board? Ms. Washington? No questions, Madam Vice Chair. Donna? No questions, thank you. Mr. Geraldo? No questions, Madam Vice Chair. <laughs> thank you. Does anyone from the applicant's team seek to address the board on the issue of the waiver request? Uh, yes, Madam Vice Chair. This is Robert Antonetti at the law firm Schiff Lake Warren. Um, uh, with regards to this, um, you know, we're, we're very uh, supportive of the request, obviously, and we would uh, greatly welcome the opportunity to address uh, some of the particulars if and when the, uh, the rules would be waived to allow that to move forward. So uh, we do urge your support uh, because the these, uh, this discussion is of utmost importance for the success of this retail center. Thank you. Okay. Board members, are there any questions of Ms. Antonetti? Ms. Washington? No questions. The Donna? Uh, Mr. Antonetti, just for the record, can you just um, clarify the reasons? I assume that's an emergency or, or other good cause, but could you just put them on the record, please, and why? Yes, uh, Mr. Dorr, yes. Um, so this revolves around certain transportation issues, um, mm -hmm. and as most preliminary plans, there is a um, a trip cap for this project. Uh, the trip cap was gen was generated based on a general retail trip generation rate for 300,000 square feet. When the proposal was made, there was um, back in 2011, there was the uh, possibility for a uh, a fueling and and convenience store use to be located within this integrated shopping center. Unfortunately, the applicant did not include that as a separate trip generation rate, which it had at the time. Um, if it had done that, um, the trip cap would be, would be higher, and I can explain that later if the rules are waived. Um, but without any relief, the good cause here is that um, the C store and, and fueling station is allowed by right. Um, if it were to go forward, it would essentially take up take up 100% of the AM peak hour trip from the entire center because of this, uh, uh, because of this uh, issue. Um, so we believe that hopefully represents other good cause and it would advance the public interest to reconsider the condition uh, to see if we can rectify that in an appropriate way. Thank you. Thank you. No, no further questions, thank you. Mr. Geraldo, questions? 
No questions. Thank you, Ma uh, Madam Vice Chair. If there are no further questions, we will entertain a motion. So moved, Madam Chair. Vice Chair, uh, that we waive the rules. Second, Commissioner Geraldo. I have a motion and a second that we waive the rules. I will call the roll. Commissioner Dorna. Good. Aye. Commissioner Washington. Aye. Commissioner Geraldo. Good. Aye. The motion, the ayes have it, the motion passes. Let's move now to item number 10, the request for reconsideration. Uh, the board will now consider the applicant's request that we reconsider approval of preliminary plan of subdivision 409041 for the Beach Tree CSC parcel. Section 10E of the board's rules provide that reconsideration may be only be granted in furtherance of substantial public interest. The board finds there was an error in the original decision caused by fraud, surprise, mistake, and advertence. Other good cause. Senator, let's see if we have time to Mr. Heath now. Well, first of all, let's see if we have everybody here that we need to have. Mr. Heath is here, Ms. Khan is here, Ms. Antoinette is here, Mr. Maysock is still here as well. We also have Len Hart, uh, and we did not hear that person respond. What about Bill Anthony? I think we did hear. Ms. Anthony? By Daniel Jackson. Present. Okay. I think that's it. Okay. Mr. Heath, let's turn to you to provide the board background on the applicant's request and staff's recommendation. Mr. Heath. Okay. So, uh, um, so uh, staff believes that the the new information provided warrants granting other reconsideration. The applicant has provided a traffic study dated May 5th, 2020, uh, that reanalyzed the original traffic study from August 2010 uh, by inserting trip, gener trip generation data for uh, a convenience market with gasoline pumps. Uh, it is an analysis that could be uh, that could have been done with the original application. Uh, uh, staff has uh, not yet found an opinion supported by the full analysis of the request. With we will perform that analysis prior to the reconsideration. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any questions from Mr. Heath from the board members? Any questions? No questions, Madam Vice Chair. Mr. Donner? No, ma'am. Mr. Geraldo? No, Madam Vice Chair. Okay, we don't have any questions, and we'll turn to the um, members of the applicant's team if you wish to speak to the board, to address the board. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Again, for the record, Robert Antonetti with the law firm of Chip Lane Moore. I'm pleased to be here on behalf of the applicant, uh, BOB Limited Partnership. Uh, I do have uh, with us today Mr. Bill Anthony, who is on the line. Um, he's, uh, he's just on mute. Uh, Mr. Daniel Jackson. Uh, civil engineer for the project, uh, more stretchy, and uh, Mr. Michael Lenhart uh, with uh, Lenhart Traffic Consultants um, regarding the uh, simple background material and the overall request. Um, I, I would like to uh, just incorporate some of my comments from the previous item uh, with regards to this request. Uh, we do believe in this uh, situation uh, that other good cause exists to advance a uh, significant public interest. Uh, for for looking at conditions 7, 12, and 13A through D, um, as outlined in my letter of June 10th, 2020. Um, at the crux of this um, is the ability to move forward with retail development at this site. This site has been planned for some type of retail development for several decades now. Um, it is currently zoned CSC. It was previously zoned LAC, Local Activity Center. Um, in 2011, a preliminary plan was approved, as, uh, as was stated by staff, which approved up to 300,000 square feet of retail uses. Um, at that time, there was um, exhibits showing conceptual layouts of, of how the parcels would work together. Um, um, in that layout, there was a convenience store with fueling station that was reflected on the plans, and that's shown in the backup material of my June 10, 2020 letter, specifically the traffic report. Uh, prepared by Mr. Lenhart and his team. Uh, the board has reconsidered this matter uh, previously, 
and the most recent reconsideration in 2019 uh, modified a condition allowing direct access from Leland Road, if approved by the operating agency, um, again, to serve the potential for a gas station and convenience market at the corner of Leland Road and US 301. So this, this tenant, um, uh, this potential tenant or a potential tenant has approached us and we're very excited about the possibility to move forward because as you are aware, the retail market in general is, uh, is very lukewarm to new development right now. Um, again, the project has been zoned or planned for commercial development for decades. And we've had a struggle uh, trying to attract retailers to get this off the ground. Uh, while we have interest from one party, we'd really like to see that through. And in the process of reviewing for the C, uh, the, the impact of the C store, a convenience store and, and uh, fueling station user, we looked at the trip cap to see what that might do to the trip cap. It was through that analysis that we realized that um, there was an error made on behalf of the applicant um, when we prepared the study. Um, you know, it was inadvertence at, at worst, uh, but uh, essentially the trip cap was based on a general retail trip generation rate for the entire 300,000 square feet. Um, the preliminary plan again conceptually showed a convenience store and gas station. What it did not do in the trip generation assumptions was to utilize the available trip generation for convenience and gas station user, which was available at the time in 2011. Um, if that had been done, the trip cap would have been appropriately placed higher for uh, both the AM and PM uh, peak hour, and the applicant then would have a, uh, a cap where they could have the C store and gas station use contemplated in 2011, and then have, have the ability to proceed with the balance of the, uh, the commercial shopping center approved in 2011. Unfortunately, um, the cap that we have now has a, has a a certain peak hour trip cap, and as I mentioned in my previous comments in the last item, in the AM alone, the gas station and C store would exceed 100% of the AM trip cap using trip generation rates uh, for, for those uses, which will be required when we go to detailed site plan for that use and department. So we're, we're, in, we're in quite a, a quandary here. Um, what we're asking the board is to recognize um, that uh, that situation and to allow us the ability to go back and analyze uh, the merits with the staff. We've already done that preliminarily or actually uh, initially by providing a traffic uh, analysis which went back and looked at the looked at the traffic study from 2011 and essentially incorporated the rates that were available for a C store and gas station at that time and re-ran the analysis. The result is we came out with a trip cap um, as set forth in my June 10th letter that has an appropriate uh, um, AM and PM trip cap to allow for all these uses to coexist. The net net of that um, is that the uh, additional trips need to be accounted for um, in the adjacent US 301 road network. Um, I believe the board is also aware that US 301, between Central Avenue and Pennsylvania Avenue, has mm -hmm. a CIP project that the county has approved, and it is within the six-year funding window of the county's uh, most recently approved CIP. Um, what that, uh, when a project is, looks to take advantage of that CIP and, and participate, what they do is they pay a pro rata share for their percentage of the additional capacity created by the CIP mitigation improvements at all the intersections between Central Avenue and Pennsylvania Avenue. What we've done is with the additional trips that we've now um, asked the board to um, allow us to go forward on the merits with, we've gone back and looked at condition 12, which is the financial contribution that these, this project is supposed to make to the US 301 um, CIP. Again, it's a pro rata contribution. What we've done now is we've increased that contribution commensurate with the additional trip cap. Um, so that is, that is the request um, for, for 12. Conditions 13A through D, deal with, as outlined in my letter of June 10th, 2020, certain off-site improvements um, along Leland Road. And uh, there's two intersections. Uh, it's Leland Road, Oak Grove Road, which um, it's really the same road that changes names once you cross a certain span on that roadway. Um, we have two conditions where we need to make improvements, the Leland Road and Morse Plain Boulevard intersection. Uh, that first condition as currently worded, states that we need to construct a right turn lane and a left turn lane, 
and install a signal if deemed, ne uh, if, um, if deemed necessary by public works. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue with that is that the left turn lane and right turn lane may not be a requirement. It is something that if a signal is warranted, that the operating agency, public works, would then require it to be done. Um, by stating it the way it's written right now, it requires us, it kind of puts the cart before the horse. It basically says, do these turn lanes, oh, and if the signal's warranted, do the signal. Um, we think a signal could, if it is warranted, could be constructed with con concurrence of the operating agency, public works. And we feel that a left and right turns, uh, turn lane may not be necessary at all. But through the suggested revisions in this reconsideration, this would give that discretion back, well, we keep the discretion with the operating agency, which is where it, it should have been in the first place. Uh, this was an oversight on behalf of the applicant. Um, it was based in part on how it was presented back in 2011. And we uh, would welcome the opportunity to go to the merits on, on this um, to validate whether what I'm stating here and in my letter of June 10th um, is accurate. Uh, secondarily, um, condi uh, condition 13D deals with a second intersection along Oak Grove Road and Church Road. Uh, for those who uh, are familiar with, uh, with that road, that's really a, where the um, St. Barnabas Church is, um, mm -hmm. where that runs into it. It's a, uh, there's also a cemetery on, on one side of the road. It's a very tight geometry. Um, uh, there's two things that have gone on since 2011, uh, which would, uh, we believe warrant a change enough for other good cause uh, to this condition language um, that may not make these improvements required. Uh, one, uh, there was a roundabout proposed at one point uh, by another project, I believe Oak Creek, which has now been converted to a, uh, a signal. Um, the board considered that through a reconsideration some time ago, uh, but that was post-2011 when this preliminary plan was first reviewed. Uh, we believe that a signal, a signal uh, at this intersection would um, eliminate the need for these additional approaches. Uh, and since the historic setting for St. Barnabas Church, it's really on both sides of this roadway, space is at a premium. So we'd like the opportunity to go to the merits to determine whether or not um, that, uh, that, that is correct, and as we've asserted, and then have flexibility in the language to allow essentially for the, for the operating agency to make modifications um, if uh, improvements such as the ones I've mentioned um, have, are essentially going forward. I believe that, they, that the improvement for that signal is bonded, uh, but that's subject to further verification. But um, again, this is since we're in for reconsideration, uh, we believe other good cause in light of those circumstances exists to allow for the potential for, for um, contagious condition 13, as I just outlined, and more specifically outlined in my June 10th letter to me made. Um, overall, I, I just, I, when I appreciate the indulgence on this, I'm sorry to have belabored all the finer points of it, um, but again, we believe other good cause exists in this situation. Uh, to correct the conditions or, or revise the conditions as suggested in my testimony in the June 10th letter. Um, without it, uh, particularly in regards to the trip cap, um, the purposes of this of this preliminary plan are completely frustrated. Um, essentially, one user, which was again contemplated back in 2000, 2011, would exceed the, the morning trip cap for the entire project. Um, there is a way through this. There is a way to modify it appropriately based on the conditions and um, trip generation rates available at the time, as I've stated. And we would uh, greatly appreciate um, your support for this reconsideration request, so then we can go back to staff and work on the particulars to see if, um, see if we can get the trip cap and the other conditions I mentioned and, and, and a, in a state that uh, they otherwise would have been if we had known all this information uh, or had caught it um, back in 2011. So again, thank you for your time and your consideration. Um, our, my team, our team is here and the applicant is here to answer any questions that you may have, but we appreciate your support and consideration of this request. Thank you, Ms. Antonelli. Let's see if we have any questions. Uh, Ms. Washington? Uh, no questions, Madam Vice Chair. Mr. Dorla? No questions on cell phone. Mr. Duraldo? Uh, no questions, Madam Vice Chair. If there are no questions, then we will entertain a motion. Um, Madam Vice Chair, uh, Commissioner Washington here, and I think based on the applicant's testimony, um, as well as the, the detailed um, 
uh, request is outlined in his June 10th memo and he referenced several times and especially with regards to the information um, surrounding the new traffic study and then finally staff support of the applicant's request. Uh, I move that we grant request for reconsideration for preliminary plan 4-09041 uh, specifically for conditions 7, 12, and 13A through D and finding number 8 on the basis of um, other good cause and inadvertence and in furtherance of substantial public interest. Seconded, Commissioner Geraldo. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Washington and second by Commissioner Geraldo. Let's call the roll, uh, Commissioner Florida. Aye. Commissioner Washington. Aye. Commissioner Geraldo. Aye. Uh, the ayes have it and the motion passes. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now, we will wait for a moment and uh, Madam Chair will be back to take the last item, item number 10, I believe it is, 3A. Is she available? If not, I am. Camera on. Okay. We will go. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you too. You went to get some of those fig bars. Actually, I had. I literally had a bowl of cherries. Okay. Oh. So um okay, Bye. so um so now we're going to go to um item three A. So item 3A, we have several pieces of, of legislation. So Ms. Hightower, are you on? Yes, Madam Chair, good afternoon. So we have, we have a series of bills, I say 39, CB 39, 40, 41, 49, 51, and then CR 56. So yes, if everyone is ready, Ms. Hightower, you are on. Okay, good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the planning board. For the record, Raina Hightower. Council Bill 39 permits a vehicle or camping trailer storage yard by special exception in the CSC zone under certain circumstances. This bill appears to be drafted for a specific property. Staff is unable to identify all properties meeting the criteria of footnote 84. Uh, the bill could create numerous uh, unintended consequences. Uh, staff has recommended that language be added to the bill to require additional special exception requirements for this use. Staff recommends that the planning board vote to oppose CB 39 once you That concludes my presentation. Okay. Um, thank you, Ms. Hightower. Um, let's see if there are any questions. Madam Vice Chair? No questions. Um, Commissioner Washington? No questions. Commissioner Geraldo? No questions. Commissioner Dorner? No questions. Is there a motion? Move that we accept staff's recommendation and oppose, Madam Chair. Second. We have a motion by um, Commissioner Washington, seconded by Commissioner Geraldo. Um, Madam Vice Chair? But I. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? But I. Commissioner Dorner? Aye. Okay, ayes have it 5 0. Next is CB 40 2020. Mm -hmm. Yes, which permits eating or drinking establishments, excluding a drive through service in the RE zone under certain circumstances. We believe this bill also is for a specific property and are unable to determine the number of properties that may meet the uh, criteria of the footnote. Um, also, the age of the building, because the building has to be 20 years old, could cause um, approval issues requiring numerous departures and variances. Staff recommends that development regulations be added to the bill. Uh, staff recommends that the planning board vote to oppose CB 40 2020. Uh, that concludes my presentation on that bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, let's see. Are there any questions of Ms. Hightower and CB 40? Madam Vice Chair. Okay. Madam Chair. Okay. Second. Okay. Um, is there any discussion? Um, Madam Vice Chair? But I. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Vote aye to oppose. Okay. Uh, 
Thank you for that cla um, clarification. Okay. Because it was approval of the staff recommendation. Commissioner Dwarner? Good eye. Okay. Um, okay. The ayes have it 5 0. Okay. Next, we have CB41. Uh, yes. This bill increases the maximum lot coverage area from 30% to 40% in the RR zone under certain circumstances. Uh, planning staff believes that the existing uh, DSP amendment process is a more appropriate process to increase lot coverage uh, area within a cluster subdivision. Uh, the process allows the planning board to um, assess the impact of the greater lot coverage for the overall community and it provides community input. Staff uh, recommends that the planning board vote to oppose CB 41 2020. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions of Ms. Hightower? Any board member? Well, I, and I, I will second that, but I wanted to ask staff if she would provide those comments back to um, the, 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 whether the bill sponsor or by a committee that there's a more appropriate vehicle to, through which we should accomplish this. Yeah. Yes, Commissioner, yes. I will do so. And if that's in addition to the motion, I do agree. We, we, do, we do include this in the letters and the transmittals. Okay. I sign. Okay, thank you. So we have a motion and a second. Um, is there a, a discussion? Madam Vice Chair? But I. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? But I. Um, Commissioner Dorner? But I. The ayes have it 5 0. CB 49 2020. Yes, this bill requires a floodplain study as a prerequisite for residential development of RX. MXT zoned land in a FEMA flood. This bill requires a floodplain study as a prerequisite for residential development of MXT zoned land located in a floodplain. Uh, there is a floodplain ordinance which has detailed regulations governing development in the floodplain. DPI administers and enforces the floodplain ordinance. Uh, the applicant uh, must provide information from DPI on whether there is a floodplain on the property for review and approval of a NRI before a CSP application can be accepted. Therefore, staff believes that the additional study required by this bill is duplicative of the existing regulations. Staff recommends the planning board vote to oppose CB 49 2020 bill is unnecessary for the above stated reason. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. Hightower. Uh, uh, does the board have any questions? Is there a Madam motion? Madam Chair, I, I would, we, we support staff's recommendation, but all, again, would ask that we include the rationale in the transmittal letter. Yeah. Second. Um, we have a motion and a second. Uh, is there a discussion? Madam Vice Chair? Good eye. Um, Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Geraldo? Good aye. Um, Commissioner Dorner? Good aye. Okay, the ayes have it 5 0. CB 51 2020. Yes, this bill establishes universal design and visibility design guidelines for development of all dwelling unit types after a certain date. Staff supports the concept of this bill. Uh, but we defer to DPI for the operational specifics of the bill since they uh, provide oversight in construction and development under Subtitle 4. Staff recommends that the Planning Board vote to support CB 51 2020 in concept. Move approval, Madam Chair. Okay. Second. We have a motion from, Madam, uh, from Commissioner Washington, seconded by Commissioner Geraldo. Is there discussion? Madam Vice Chair? But I. Commissioner Washington? Aye. Commissioner Ger Geraldo? Good aye. Commissioner Dorner? Good aye. The ayes have it 5 0. Thank you. And then finally, CR 56 2020. Yes, Madam Chair. This resolution uh, would request an Army Corps of Engineers study to establish a plan of action for stormwater management for specific areas uh, of the county. Planning staff supports this resolution 
in concept as well. But we recommend an amendment to the resolution to require the study area to be a uh, countywide instead of a specific area. Planning staff recommends that the planning board vote to support CR 56 2020 with that amendment. Thank you. Move approval, Madam Chair. Second. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Washington, seconded by Commissioner Geraldo. Madam Vice Chair. Vote aye. Um, uh, Commissioner Washington. Aye. Commissioner Geraldo. Vote aye, Madam Chair. Commissioner Dorner. Vote aye. Okay, the ayes have it, 5-0. That concludes your um, legislation for today, Ms. Hightower. Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Hunt, are you on? Yes, Madam Chair. Mr. Hunt, is there any additional business to come before the planning board today? Madam Chair, that's all the business before the planning board today. Thank you. Thank you so very much, um, everyone. Thank you, thank you everyone. Um, everyone, please stay safe, stay woke, look out for one another, take good care of yourselves and your loved ones. Planning board. And make sure, and make sure you fill out the census. And make sure you fill out the census. <laughs> yes, indeed. Planning board is adjourned. Yes, indeed. All right.